Hello and welcome to the second annual Lost Spark Game of the Year podcast. Joining me this week as we break down the highs and lows of 2016 are two well-rested, dare I, dare I say slightly more rounded sparks. It's Mr. Darren Whittam and James Thomas. Hello, Hello chaps, how you doing? Yeah, Good hi, thinking. hi. Happy New Year everybody, Happy New Year listeners, Happy New Year guys. How are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. How were your Christmases? James, how was your Christmas? It was good, it was good. It was a nice mix of uh, family and friends and doing nothing, which was nice. Apart from the exciting thing of grouting the living room floor. But hey... That's for our DIY side podcast, I'm sure, that we're going to start spinning up at some point. But uh, no, it was good. It was good. Lots of time for gaming and uh, of the board and video variety. Uh, but also got to see Moana. I think I was saying I wanted to go and see it last last time. But we managed to resurrect a, a family tradition that we had ages ago. So like for Christmas Eve, we used to go and see like... Um, and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and Muppets Christmas Carol, loads of things on Christmas Eve before we'd go over to my nan's for the big event itself. And so I managed to persuade Ali, um, let's let's go let's go see Moana on Christmas Eve, and it was great. Um, it was us in a cinema filled with parents and children. I think we were the odd ones out at that point in time, but it was uh, it was good fun. Excellent stuff. And how was the movie? Was it good? I haven't seen it yet. Was it, it was it a good movie? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I mean. Um, I don't think it's quite Pixar level, you know, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's not quite as good as I think, um, I think a lot of people said Frozen is still better, um, but it had the best comedy chicken sidekick I think you'll find in the movie this year. They just <laughs> nailed the stupid silent animal companion down to an absolute T, um, and the rock, the rock was great in it as well, I do love The Rock, um, and he, he was the right casting for that, uh, for that character. Yeah, oh, fantastic, superb. I actually, but over Christmas, I actually managed to catch up with a Pixar movie that I hadn't seen, which was Finding Dory. Um, so we watched it on Christmas Day. We had Christmas at my house, so we uh, we watched Finding Dory on Christmas Day, and that was really good. I really enjoyed it. I, I liked the um, there was a little short before called Piper um, about a little Piper bird, um, which was absolutely fantastic. That had us all going oh gushing uh, while we were watching that um, down in the movie room. But that was that was That's really awesome. good fun because huh? I, I always think with Pixar and Disney films as well when they go into like the, the cg there's always seems to be one thing they really focus on to try and like make stand out and mm. i think with moana it was like wet hair that right. every time someone got dunked into a water it looked like their hair came out just as you would expect rather than just a shinier version and i think when i saw piper they just the sand like all the grains was absolutely fantastic Absolutely, I always kind of find those shorts as almost like Pixar showing off. Yep. You know, it's like, <laughs> or you'll find something that they're going to be using in their next movie. Tech it's like demo. Umbrella. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what it is. It's like Umbrella. There's one called the Blue Umbrella, which is absolutely gorgeous, and I love that short. But you just kind of see that go. Okay, when are you going to use that rain? You know, when are you going <laughs> to use that? It's just like all that lighting. Which, if you look at the Cars Three trailer, the lighting um, in in that um, Blue Umbrella looks very similar to yeah. to the cars 3 so that's, it's very interesting that's such a dark trailer though as well considering oh. it's a kids t- a, a kids movie i thought it was quite grim it was almost seemed like <laughs> like a cbo like once once lightning mcqueen has left the track it just seemed like one of those like it's over it's over for him what will he do next you can imagine just like exploding right at the start, and all the kids in the in the audience just kind of like taking this big gasp. I always had <laughs> it's quite funny actually. But on Christmas Day, we get completely off on a tangent. But on Christmas Day, um, we had like um, I had my nephews and my um, and my family around, and we were watching this kind of countdown of the best Pixar moments. And they showed that bit in Toy Story three, and Nicola would probably if she was here, she'd jam in and say, "Don't say what you're about to say." But there's that bit in Toy Story three where they're all going kind of down into that incinerator. And they all kind of just hold hands and they oh. look at each other. And I always thought the best ending of that movie is if right at the end where they look at each other, they all just think, this is it. Cut Fate to black. black. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Wait about three seconds, then start playing You've Got a Friending Me. Not a dry eye in the yeah. house. <laughs> but not the lively version. Just like the version of Gears oh. of War would try and put it on a trailer. Just that, you know, slow down. Oh my God, that would be dark, even better. <laughs> You can imagine how many kids and You've adults would just be. <laughs> in me. Oh my goodness! And then it would just be like <laughs> they they could have the dates of Woody like when he was made. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, Darren gets out of this dark <laughs> funk. How was your Christmas, sir? How was your console Christmas? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Thank you. A console Christmas, yeah. Um, I'm feeling much more rounded. Thank you very much. But not rested. I'm very tired. I've been an 
a permanently switched on child entertainment machine for the entire time, which has just left me very drained, too tired when sort of Sam's gone to bed to do anything really. It's just like, oh god, I got to bed now. And after Christmas was over, it's Sam's birthday because he's uh, right. His birthday was on New Year's Day. His birthday party was the day before. In between mm-hmm. that was preparation, so I've just been like, oh my goodness me. So um, that's it's, but it's been great, but it's been great, just a bit tiring. Um, and yeah, a console Christmas morning for me uh, and and the family and the wife and family themselves because we are now re PS Ford. So I'm a PS4 <laughs> Pro owner. Um, well, yeah, I'm not just a PS4 owner. I'm a PS4 Pro owner. Yes, wow. I bought myself the title of being a pro. I, I wasn't a professional gamer. Until the day I took ownership of this console, but now, hear me, world! Sony Does it come decrees with a little plaque you can put on your door. Yeah, professional pro gamer. Sony SCR, Sony Entertainment Interactive decrees that with your money you are now a <laughs> professional gamer. So I am. A, I'm a gaming pro now, which is great. Um, so yeah, I got that. Uh, really easy setup, which is fantastic. Uh, I was expecting a long update, so I sort of got it out of the box and set it up early, just to leave it updating, but. Um, whether the batch I got was pretty firmware uh, updated already, I don't know. But it, it was literally a quarter of an hour, and it was ready, which, wow. was, which was great. So, yeah, no hassle. Picked up the HDR, did the 4K, because I read there was a lot of horror stories, people saying things didn't work. Everything worked perfect with just the simplicity of plugging the HDMI in. You know, that was it. Everything was working. Um, so, yeah, that... that that's been that's been really good, yeah. So that's, so that's fantastic. I mean, what did you think? What did you think when you got it out? Did you? Because you have you seen the pro before? Um, before you got it, before you kind of got it out of the box, had you seen it? No, what do you think of the form factor? Yeah, not not in the flesh, really. Um, just online and stuff, and reading news reports. So I hadn't, I hadn't actually held one or anything. Um, yeah, I, you know, I liked it. Very. It's, it's a bit odd for me because I kind of wanted both consoles to be white. I was happy with the Xbox One S being white because my Xbox mm-hmm. One was black and my PS4 was white, but the PS4 Pro is black, so I've sort of switched them over. I wanted both white, but I don't think you can get a PS4 Pro in white yet. Um, but I'm happy no. with the sort of the black and white thing. Um, and yeah, you know, it's slightly fatter than the than the PS4 with that extra sort of jam sandwich bit in the middle, that extra layer of, uh, of meaty goodness in the middle. That, that's the pro right there, isn't it? That that middle that middle tier. That's that's the pro. Yes. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you know, it's it's very similar. It's a little bit bigger, but not not sort of cumbersomely so. Uh, it's a nice looking console for the power that that's packed in there. You know, I think it's it's a good size, isn't it? When you think about how big the Xbox original Xbox One was, and other consoles like the original Xbox, for instance, uh, that was a bit of a behemoth. Um, so yeah, I like it. You know, everything is it's really neat, and you put you know, once it's set up, it's just it's just nice, isn't it? It's very unassuming there in the corner. I quite like the yes. white at the front, how it's sort of got a gradient that goes across the front of the PS4. You know, how it sort of fades out, doesn't it, from left to right? Mm-hmm. I quite like that. Um, apart from that, though, you know, it's just it's just a box, really, and. <laughs> A it's box of wonders. A box of wonders, indeed. <laughs> that I could crack open, but I haven't got to experience yet. I haven't got anything that that shows off the the PS4 ness, the HDR ness, um, the 4K ness, really yet. Because I got, uh, right. I will get to it later. But I got Last Guardian with it, um, and that is that does demonstrate HDR, and it is at a higher frame rate um, than the standard PS4. But, I, you know, it's not something that you kind of go, oh, wow, that's amazing, that's what I paid my money for. So I'm I'm expecting a little wait on that. There's, the Resogun 4K update hasn't come out yet. Um, no. So, yeah, I'm, to me, it was just sort of... It was brilliant to be excited and have like sort of abstained for a couple of months and then get it on Christmas morning and be, hooray, look, it's the pro, and then set it all up again. See all my my old friends, all my, my games, Spelunky back on PS4 instead of on Xbox. You know, I like a bit of variation. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's good. Uh, it's real. It's nice. It works perfectly. The UI is just the same, you know. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what it can do. I'm expecting. I'm expecting to feel that. I'm not sure if there's anything sooner, but I'm expecting Horizon Zero Dawn to show me that. And if I had yes. still got um, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare kicking about, that may have uh, that may have demonstrated it too. And it would have kind of been nice 
to see a difference, you know, play a game that I played already on standard and then gone and played it on pro. But I haven't had the good fortune to do that. What you did with Titanfall, didn't you? So you could see that sort of hopefully day night or or day mid afternoon difference um, between the two. I did indeed, and also over Christmas, um, because Nicola was playing Skyrim um, on the big TV, um, I was playing on on the little TV, I managed to hook up the PlayStation 4 Pro to a 1080p um, TV, thanks to that little kind of uh, switch that I bought, so I managed to kind of easily do that, and just HDMI kind of coming out of that. So I was playing um, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, I was playing that on the 1080p, and then Nicola went off to bed, so I quickly did a switcheroo with the HDMI, jumped onto the big TV, when obviously you get kind of a bit more uh, of the the, the 4k-ness um, and I noticed a difference I noticed quite a lot of difference actually on um, Call of Duty, it looks great on 1080p running on a Playstation Pro but when you actually put it up onto the TV now I don't know if it's what my TV's doing or whether the Playstation Pro's doing it but it definitely looks shiny and it definitely looked brighter and it just looks stunning so it, I don't know if it was maybe because of the big screen as well but there was all those factors together made it a much better uh, experience for, for my liking. So, yeah, so I saw it both on Titanfall and also Call of Duty as well. Excellent. Well, yeah, that that's really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing... Because it's weird, because whatever I get, um, it'll just be like, that's the way it is. You know, that's the way it is. And it'll be, diff- it'll be difficult for me to appreciate what it, what it would have been like on, on, the, on the base PS4. You but know, you, because everything... You can everything's... toggle it off, can't you? You can, you can toggle, like, HDR not, and... N- not on all games. So at the moment, in these early days, it's... You, like, no. like for Last Guardian, for instance, you can't do it in game. You'd have to go back to the settings menu uh, and change, okay. yeah. change the resolution to 1080p, and then restart the console, and then restart the game, and then then it would uh, fire up in 1080 mode. So you can't just. Not all of the games have just got toggles, which is which is a shame. I guess what you could do is you could just shut down the uh, advanced stuff on your HDMI and then, do, like you say, just say to the PS4 Pro that you are um, running on the T- uh, 1080p TV. But your TV is still going to do some of that um, re-engineering. Upscale, magic, yeah, yeah. Upscaling, isn't it? Yeah. So it's going to... I mean, you're lucky, actually, bit. because Sony have actually given you a gift. You didn't know that they'd given you the gift, but they've given you the gift of being able to watch it in standard by... Giving you the past through PSVR box. Now we thought we thought that that was a bad thing because it took things away. But actually, for us guys that want to see things with a critical view, you can just feed it through there and see it with nothing at all extra. <laughs> just turn that bad boy on, and that's it. <laughs> it's Thank all you, over. Sony. So, so what have you been playing um, over the Christmas break? Go on, James. You first. Oh, well, it's 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 not going to surprise anyone, I'm sure. Hitman. Every Yay. every waking moment that I wasn't like having a mince pie <laughs> shoved in my hand by a relative or friend, I was pretty much playing Hitman, as Ali's frustration will attest. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've I've really gone deep on that. I have now managed to get to the end of the the campaign and got to mastery level twenty, which is like a, it's on every level you get to do XP that tots up your level, and I've sort of maxed out those levels on each of them, so unlocked all the different starting points and weapons and disguises that you can get, um, and I still love it. I, I'm still going back in despite having you know completed uh the game um yeah i i think there's one poor level which is the penultimate level because for for the most part hitman is i think at best when you've got the like the cities or the large houses or the hotels those sort of places where you can sneak from room to room and adopting different disguises be it house staff or guests or what have you but the penultimate level they sort of threw you into a militia training camp and I, th- I I liked it that they were trying to do something different. You know, it wasn't just another um, friendly place that you could saunter through. They, ev- everyone there was an armed git ready to kill you. Um, but it just lost something because it was very open. Everyone mm. looked the same. So it meant that disguises were shades of grey rather than very distinct things. So had this minor blip, but um, the last level in Tokyo was superb where you... You're basically sent to this high-class hospital in Japan, and you have to wander around in a kimono for half of it, and it strips you of all your abilities to sneak weapons in as a starting point. So you have to go and find poison. You have to go and find sharp objects. It's, I think, it added a really nice twist, a nice level of difficulty for that final hurrah before I before I mopped up the campaign. Wow, you had me at Tokyo, man. Wow. <laughs> it's great. It's That's great. Just- um, yeah, I've, we've, I, it's got to the point now we've started doing uh, leaderboard challenges with a friend at work. So uh, the second major level, Sapienza, is uh, set on the Amalfi Coast. 
and we've basically just been trying to rinse that and go through it as quickly as possible. I think between us, we've got it down to like eight or nine minutes from beginning to end. Um, like are you, I can usually do it, saunter through in about half an hour or so if you want to feel casual about it. So we're trying to squeeze and speed run it. So it's taking on a completely different feel right now. I did. I was just about to say that I did see that you were kind of uh, on Twitter that you were kind of turned into a bit of a trophy Thomas, uh, <laughs> laying down some laying down some smack talk. Yes, yes. Well, you've got you've got to keep these people in their place. It's uh... absolutely <laughs> brilliant. That's what I like to see. Are you on PS4 then, James? On it? No, no. I'm on Xbox. I I, oh, okay. I value achievements over trophies. So uh, that's right, where fine. my single player allegiances lie. Because I'm I'm. I'm just listening to these achievements that you've done because this is going to be once I've got because you, I, I think I might have to get this game and we'll come to that later. But your achievements, where well, you were just listing off, is going to be my targets. And ah. I just hope that I because I love that. You know, I'll try and catch up to you. I actually prefer being behind. I don't like being in the lead because when you, <laughs> when you're behind, you've always got that goal to go for. Yeah, and uh, so you're I'll in the slipstream stream and you. you can just coast coast yeah. behind me and then overtake at the last second. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just hope that you're still as passionate by because uh, I'll th- probably get hold of the uh, the full pack at the end of uh, end of this month. Um, so I'm just hoping that you're still, or even if you have a rest, maybe back by then my enthusiasm will, will pull you back in. I keep thinking I should have a break because it feels very much like where I was with Rocket League at the start of this year where I was playing nothing but it and pretty much the only reason I stopped playing Rocket League was because I felt I should play other games um, whereas with Hitman I haven't quite hit that point yet I still want to keep going back to it like, there's an elusive target this week and I'm already just like sauntering around the hotel where the uh, the elusive food critic is uh is currently visiting and so just trying to I, I spent 10 minutes earlier just stood in a restaurant watching him just waiting just waiting for him to do something <laughs> this is where i'm very content with this game because i was it's almost the complete opposite of rocket league where i used to go into rocket league because i could get a whole game done in five or ten minutes hitman nowadays i have to either just go organs blazing in it or i can just happily stand there doing nothing for half an hour but feel like i've got <laughs> something out of it wow do you find that when you're not playing it you're sort of planning and plotting Oh yes, there was there was a weird moment because it was the first day back at work today, and there was a point where I sat in a meeting where we were discussing what we're doing over the next few weeks, and my eyes just caught on the fire. Um, what do you call it? The fire alarm. Um, yeah, my eyes just happened to catch the fire alarm, and I just went. Oh my god, that's how I could do it. Because the elusive target just doesn't move. So, I, <laughs> so as it. soon as I got home, I just ran around the hotel going, is there a fire alarm? Is there a fire alarm? So it's like there was just this, this deep-seated trigger in me that just clicked, ignored what was going on, and went straight to the game in my mind. Excellent. <laughs> that's, that's just the know that in, in the meeting, they're going, James, James, James. <laughs> Shaking <laughs> yeah, James. James. No, it goes, like, it comes back to the meeting. It's like, oh, pardon? Pardon? <laughs> Just putting an assassination. I mean, yes, yes, we're, we're all on schedule for the uh, quarter one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I remember I had that one. Swear. I've had it a few times, but the one that popped into my mind as you painted that picture was um, when I was playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yes! A lot. yes. And I used to go out and I'd just I'd look at walls and the, the pavement and, and just anything out of the ordinary. Was like, I could grind up there. I could jump over to there. I'd get an awesome combo down this street. Yep. Or parks as well. It's like, round the roundabout, I could ollie to that, go down the swing. <laughs> Brilliant. I think the, the last time I had it is well, one of the last times was Splinter Cell. I remember just constantly, like, covertly going when you could sneak over there, you could take out that light, then you'd be in the darkness over there, then you could get to that doorway. It's 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 troubling. It's troubling because I mean, I've I've been so influenced by games in the past. I took up skateboarding, and the whole reason I drum is because of Rock Band. So let's hopefully, hopefully, Hitman doesn't have that much an effect on me. But uh, no, hopefully the lines <laughs> drawn there. But apart from that, that sort of more sinister <laughs> side of games give you influence in you. That's fantastic, isn't it? I find that a lot of my like variety of knowledge and uh, things is because of games, like because they're just so varied. You know, it's like knowing about the slightest thing about skateboarding is because of games. You know, yep. and. Uh, all sorts of things, and like like you say, you get to drum really, and all the things that it gives you the opportunity to do. You know, guitar was probably because of games as well, and um, yeah, yeah, it's just uh, it's a great hobby to have, and it's so diverse. 
Absolutely. I mean, I've heard of uh, both my nephew and also a friend, um, their their son, at school. The the teachers, the history teachers, are using things like Assassin's Creed to get the students interested in that time, in that period. You know, they're they're that's that's the kind of period, the time periods that they're focusing on because of Assassin's Creed. So it's it's really cool that they have this kind of common hook uh, that they can then kind of bring them in. Most of the time, I think one of them, I don't know if it was my nephew or my friend, but they was just saying that the teacher spent like the entire time um, just kind of debunking all of the things that happened in an Assassin's Creed. <laughs> so that was wrong. That was wrong, but made it interesting in a way that there was a they, you know, they thought that the teacher was kind of cool and hip. Yeah, you combine an interest. <laughs> exactly. You combine an interest with education like that, and if you just don't lose the education in the in the gamey part, then that that's just you know you've cracked it, haven't you? Yes, yes. So apart from Hitman in um, kind of all the waking hours, was there anything else you were playing, James? Yeah, I've, I found a new phone game. It's called Mini Metro. Uh, it's been out for quite a while, I think, on Steam and various um, iPhone, Android stores. But it's mm. this really nice little one-screen puzzle game where you are trying to run an underground um uh, transport network so you okay. get a map of various cities so you can I, I think they do things like london and paris and munich and the way the river runs through all of them is almost like the difficulty level because you need tunnels to go over or under rivers sorry and as you start you start with three different shapes so it could be like a circle a square and a triangle and you've got a number of lines that you can try and connect them with so you can start you know, like a red um, train line going up from one to the other a blue across and then as time goes on, other stations will start appearing, being different shapes. And so you have to try and connect all of these shapes to one network. And tiny little passengers will just appear at each of the stations saying that they want to go to I don't know, a, a, the nearest triangle or the nearest square. So you can have multiple circles and you can have multiple squares, but you might say just have one hexagon. And so the puzzle tends to be how can you get everyone filtered to that single hexagon? Is it a case of making that a giant transport hub or is it making everything a circular route so everyone's got enough time to get on and off and swap between trains and just spread the load somewhat? Um, it's really nice. It's really simple and the what i really like about it is that it only tends to last between like five and 15 minutes depending on how well you're doing which is which is what i really want from a portable game something that is actually bite-sized um because i used to love playing things like hexit but if you got good at certain modes they could last for hours and so they suddenly didn't serve the purpose i wanted to anymore so yeah mini metro has been really sort of the the time sink as we've gone from uh, place to place over christmas just dabbling that in with the car while ali's driving Sounds like that might have been the perfect tonic for uh, people to play while Southern Railways were on strike. <laughs> a bit more connectivity, yes. <laughs> it's like, they can't do it. I'll show you how to do a train network. Look. <laughs> yeah. I think you woke up this morning, it was asking for more money. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it gone up by 2.5%. <laughs> yeah. You may have paid four quid for it, but we have 2.5%, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goes up year was- on year, the price. Most games drop, but this one it goes up a little bit each year. <laughs> yeah. Especially the season ticket. I mean, the season pass, sorry. <laughs> so that sounds fantastic. So that was Mini Metro. I might yes. have a look at that. I yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good little time sink if you've got uh, five, ten minutes here or there. Fantastic. I've been playing a lot of, um, still playing a lot of solitaire. Nicola seems to kind of, whenever there's something maybe not kind of uh, taking her attention, or I suddenly see her iPad come out, and then so we'll be watching a TV show or a movie or something, and she's like kind of lost interest in it. I suddenly see the iPad come out, and I know she's playing, she's playing solitaire. So we've been kind of playing that kind of in the mornings while we've been off, and it's just really nice. It's a really nice kind of way to wake up, you know, kind of lazy morning, cup of coffee, you know, some Christmas cake, and, and a couple of games of solitaire to do the daily challenges uh, that was kind of my mornings over christmas it was quite nice when the ipad comes out anthony do you sort of look at him and say nicola what what are you doing it's empire strikes back for the, for i really the, do no like, i really do i'm like you, really at this yeah, it's at like, this you got in the, that's the sign she's brought it out she's not interested in this fantastic thing that, that we're doing this it's not i'm not doing it i'm doing it for us you have to watch this <laughs> Absolutely, I'm like this is this is this is Captain America: Civil War. Really, you're yeah. getting the iPad out. It's of only this. the tenth time, Nicola. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know every word. I just I think uh, we we watched Star Trek Beyond as well um, on the first of first uh, of January. Uh, I had never seen that before. That was kind of a that was definitely a. I didn't see the iPad come out of that one because that was a definitely kind of a hook all the way. So I was I was pleased at that. If I'd have seen the if I'd have heard the zip of the case, I'd be really disappointed. <laughs> Such a good game. In future, <laughs> yeah, really on your on your movie reviews, actually, I'm just going to say, did, did did Nicholas iPad come out? Yeah. yeah. How long did you last before? A solitaire appeared. <laughs> you could do a sweepstake on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure if I, I'm sure if I put like Batman versus Superman, it'd be out before I even press play. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching, trying to watch a bit of that last night, and like Nicola hates that movie so much that she just like, I can't believe this, and she just like, she just gets angry whenever she watches <laughs> that movie. It's hilarious to watch. So, it's, have you apart from Mini Metro, is there anything else that's been kind of ticking off your list, James? Yeah, the, the final game I played over Christmas, and this this was a time where I thought, no, I. I need to stop playing this and it lasted about two hours so hitman <laughs> went to one side for a whole 120 minutes while wow. i played um Astronia on the xbox so i think it's available on steam as well but it's i saw, I saw some previews for this uh i think late last year yeah, and we it, discussed it actually on the pod oh that's yeah. right yeah i th- I, th- I think i remember talk- yeah um so it got some good buzz at work. A couple of people have bought it. So after the, over the break, I decided to get grab it. It's early access, but I really like just like the look of it because it's 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 got that sort of like PlayStation One retro vibe that everyone seems to be trying for at the moment in the indie world. That's sort of you can see the polygons and they're not afraid to show you them. Um, but it's really nice because it's it allows you to have quite a terraformed world. So this it, it shares some similarities with No Man's Sky in the sense it's a procedurally generated world. There are resources there. Um, but it sort of ends at that point because you can actually affect the defamation of the land because you hoover up the resources um, as No Man's Sky. But you can also create land on top of it so you can if if there's a gap or if there's a hole in it you can just literally fill it in or maybe even create a bridge for you to get from one side of a chasm to another but it's it's just really nice and cute quaint and calming i found um it's got some it's got some nice touches i find uh there because every time you leave your spaceship you actually have to leave a tether following you as you go so you're connected to the life um preserving air and power that it gives you and if you if you roam away from the tethers you can survive for a short while but sooner or later you'll have to go back and and make sure you can get topped up on those but it's a, it adds a really nice twist to it because it allows you to anchor yourself it allows you to explore in one direction without necessarily getting lost and also give you reasons to try and hoover up these resources like i need more um carbon or i can't remember what it was composite to put down new tethers and to explore out further but beyond that it's got like a nice base building aspect too where you can create vehicle garages or maybe like a solar panel thing to make your power uh, top up more efficiently or um, a smelter where you can turn metals into different it just admittedly i'm only a couple of hours in but it just seems like i have a nice range of stuff that you can explore Uh, and beyond that i think the planets seem quite interesting they don't have the like the the wildlife on there at least not that i found yet but they have some really nice like cave systems and mountains that you can go down and exploring it so it's got that verticality that i thought no man's sky was definitely missing that sounds really good and so you, you said that's early access on xbox one yes yeah so it's, so i guess you can get a 90 minute kind of demo of it if you wanted to just kind of try it and have a look yeah i guess so and i, th- I think that will give you a good indication of uh how you feel about it because you won't be able to do a huge amount in that time but it'll definitely mm. give you that sense of whether you want to sink deeper into it and it is co-op so yeah, you can I, collaborate uh, online can't you yeah 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 is so it just a, co-op I, I thought there was more than just two that, that you could do it. i thought it was sort of like multiple people could join and all gather together and base build away and well the screenshots show about four people so i don't know if it's four or more at this point um is it local as well as is it local as, and online no because i tried to get ali in um to play it as well but um i couldn't i couldn't find a way of how to to do that okay but yeah it's, it's definitely something i want to do more in the new year especially if we can try and get some co-op going because i can see it'd be quite nice as you either strike out in different directions or you're all going hoover up and save it to get yourself a space buggy and then drive over the planet it look yeah it's it looks like wow. something i want to return to especially as the devs seem to be updating it reasonably often as well which is quite nice because i think they put a patch out on just before new year's so um yeah this, this seems to be coming weekly almost at this point 
Wow. I do love that when you put a game down for a little while, a week or something, and you probably pop it back on, and there's been an update, and there's some really good stuff there that, you, that wasn't there before, and it's yeah. just like, ah, yeah. oh, the game that keeps on giving is so good. get a lot of that with me, I find, because I'm, I'm quite new to Steam, and I do find that main, the majority of my Steam games are VR games, but I do find that, and I haven't played, if I play, and I've got so many, I put one on, I was, oh, I'll have a look at this again, I might not have played it in a month or so, and it, some of them are like whole new games there. So it's just it's just awesome, you know, the amount of changes and things. So yeah, yeah really I, th- I think it's crucial nowadays, isn't it, just to try and make sure that you keep your community. I mean, obviously, with early access games, that that's a necessity because they haven't actually released yet. Yeah, that's the but nature of the development, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, like Final Fantasy Fifteen, I guess you get a whole new ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm in the early access. I'm in the early access for release. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> superb. So, Darren, what have you been playing over the Christmas break? Okay, well, just as we're talking about that, what, what I'm not playing is Final Fantasy. I haven't, I haven't, right. had, I haven't had the, I don't know, saying I haven't had the time. I haven't had the time. I haven't had the time anyway. But even more importantly, I haven't had the inclination for the reasons stated before about this extra story mission. So I'm just leaving it now. You know, I've got other distractions that have taken me away from it, and mm-hmm. it's just gonna, it's just lying there. And when I hear. Some news. I thought about actually just getting rid of it. I was that annoyed. But I'm going to keep it because I've, I've put quite a bit of hours into it. I do like it. And I just thought, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. I won't be annoyed anymore. Just leave it there. And whenever we hear about these patches, um, I'll, I'll pick it up again. Um, so I haven't been playing that. But why I got for Christmas with the PS4 Pro, I got two games. Um, I got Dragon Quest Builders and The Last Guardian. Oh. Which is a nice little uh, twosome mm. of games. So, mm-hmm. Dragon Quest Builders, I played the demo probably round about when it came out and I liked it a lot um, and I didn't think there, were, there was a physical copy of it that you could buy for some reason and I was busy with other games anyway but the, the digital uh, download price was forty nine ninety nine, and it was just a little bit too rich um, for me at that time I didn't really want to pay 50 quid uh, so, I, so I just thought I really like that game let's wait and then I found out there was a physical copy so I put it on my Christmas list so anyway, I got it. Um, so Dragon Quest Builders, it uses the same sort of graphical style as a Dragon Quest game, which is really cute, mm-hmm. apart from it's um, sort of a Minecraft-esque world. So it's sort of a fusion of Minecraft and Dragon Quest. So you've got like story um, lines, Dragon Quest story lines, and Dragon Quest looking characters and monsters in a world that looks very much like Minecraft, but smoother, sort of. It looks better than Minecraft. It's not as pixely. It's more more blended. It's a beautiful world, but it, but in that it's made of blocks. Very you know prominent. You can see the blocks and how they fall. So that's very mm-hmm. much the landscape is like Minecraft. Um, and this game, okay, is just I put it on to have a quick go on. <laughs> it's, it's like I think I put the Last Guardian on first, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then after a bit of Last Guardian, I. Next time, because I, I think I went to bed and got up the next day, I thought, oh, well, I'll have a look at this. Since putting Dragon Quest Builders on, it has nary been out of the PS4. Ooh. You know, it's just it's just a brilliant game. It's I love it to bits. I absolutely love it. Um, the, the premise of it is that there's been a big disaster in the, in the fantasy land, and the human race got scattered, and they all forgot how to build. They forgot how to build things. They lost that um, human quality of being able to take raw resources or raw materials and fuse them together and to build and create and make things. So there was once beautiful cities, but after the Dragon Lord, I think, um, got the hump with everybody, uh, it caused a big disaster. And that memory of how to build faded from the human race. So the humans are all just like in disarray. Um, And then sort of hundreds of years later... The game starts, and you're you wake up as the legendary builder in this world where humans have forgotten how to build and create after the disaster. Um, so you wake up, and you you sort of you wake up, and a god's talking to you, or you presume it's a god, and they sort of hint that you were somebody important in that world that that was quite uh, um, built up, and then when when the world was nice, you you were quite a prominent figure there. But it just hints at that. And then, so you wake up, and the god voice says, "Oh yeah, by the way, you can build stuff. Watch this." So, it, and that it starts off in a tutorial. You're in a crypt. You wake up. It says, "Oh yeah, you want to get out of here? Oh, you're hungry after all this sleep." 
let's just show you the basics. So you you know you build a torch for a light source, and you, it shows you how to manage, how to move blocks, how to dig blocks, make a weapon, a crude stick it is, and then you start to be able to gather blocks and different resources, twigs and leaves and things. And as part of that tutorial, you um, you build your way out of the crypt that you wake up in, and then you go out into the land beautiful green valley landscape as i say it looks a bit like minecraft but much nicer looking much more um, textured and, uh, and nicely blended and you, in the distance there's a there's a ray of light which you go to and you put down your, i think it's like your hero flag or something and once you pop that down um, a bright light defines a light area in which you can build whatever you want um, so it's like the remnants of an old city called cantlin actually um and so the the game starts, and the game's quite quite free free. Uh, it's quite free and easy in that you can you can bu- just build if you want. You can just gather resources and work on your base and make it nice. But there's also, and this is where it differentiates itself from Minecraft, is that it's got a storyline that you can follow along um, to rescue the town, save the town, save the human race, and things like that. And and the story is really good because basically it's kind of. I've been on it for I don't know how many hours so far, but and I've completed this the first land. Which I mean, for for some indie games, this would be a game in itself. This first this first level, if you like, this first chapter. And as you go through it, the, the quests are quite handy because they teach you key elements and key resources that you need. Like there'll be oh, we need to get um, we need to make steel, so we need a forge, and to, and we also need copper, and we'll need different kinds of ore, and then you blend them, and it's like we need a cook fire to get this and that. Um, and as you start doing these quests, you can place all these things in your base wherever you want. You can draw out your your, your lines for the rooms, and, and really within that space, you're free to create it however you want, which is just it's just really nice. It's got a, a great interface for managing the inventory and everything. It's really intuitive, um, and it's just it's just great. And so. so I've, I've, Go, go on, mate. Sorry. So, so yeah. So, when you're like building up the the rooms and you like draw out the outline for them, does that then sort of fill it in Sim style? Where it's like, okay, we've got this L shaped kitchen. We'll just arrange stuff in it so it makes it look like a kitchen. Or do you do you have even finer controls than that? Yeah, it's kind of finer than that. You've got a top down view, and then so you make a room by um, placing. Um, Blocks, which the the most rudimentary level will be earth, because you can just harvest earth by swiping a stick at grass, mm. and you can get loads of earth. And you put it down block by block by block by block. Um, to make a room, um, the rules are the minimum rules for an empty room would be walls two blocks high, um, a door, and a light source. So mm-hmm. if you you can draw the room any way you want, I think, um, and then put a, a door, the most basic door in, which is a straw door, and then put a torch on the wall, and then you've got a room. But you can make that any shape you want. I think it might. I think you, yeah, you can uh, pretty much any size within the the highlighted area. Yeah. And after that, individual things that you make, like you can make the wall stronger if you used. As you progress, you get better um, better blocks. You know, you can get chalk from the mountains, or you can get sandstone, or later on obsidian and things like that. You can fashion. You can also build stone wall later on by you know fusing different elements and using the forge. So you can pick different strengths of that, and also. The different kinds of blocks, as well as the decorative items that I'll come on to a minute into a minute, add a points bonus to the room and so your base as a whole. So your base levels up the more nice you make it, um, and then you can start crafting different objects like tables and chairs and wardrobes and, as I think I said, cook fires and um, decorative items like swords on the wall. Um, yeah. I don't think I've gone through the whole gamut of it yet by any means. Um, windows, um, better doors, uh, different kinds of flooring. Like this, I've just used dirt at the moment, but you can get. Str- <laughs> you get. They like it. It's up. all right. <laughs> you get, you get, you up, yeah. <laughs> um, but you get straw floor, and I've been in ruined castles where you can dig up their floor, but I haven't got enough blocks of it, and it's sort of like. Uh, it might just be called castle flooring or, or brick floor, and all this. So there's just vast amounts of options to make your town better and nicer and more residents come and stay and stuff and they send you off on other quests that entail fashioning a new resource which then you can use in your base which you know and then you can get better weapons and stuff you get your smithy going and you start off with a stick but then you can make a copper sword then you can make an iron sword then you can make a steel sword then you can make steel plate armor um and then what else is it then you, you build better armor as well for yourself make better shields <laughs> 
it's just cool. And, you know, and off you go, and then you can fight better monsters, which allows you to get better stuff, which allows you to make better stuff, and then you can fight bigger monsters. I love that. So, I so, love this, that. so all of that stuff, is that through quests? Because I noticed when I played the demo, I think very much kind of what you were talking about at the start, where you have to kind of find a stick and then make fire, etc. That was all kind of, they were. that was very much kind of a quest object, wasn't it? A quest item. You had to do this, do that. You know, when you're, when you're building a bigger house, or when you're kind of building better armor, is that all, is that all because there's a quest that's asking for that or are you just doing that free form yeah i mean you can do, totally do it free form if you want but the the, the the quest tiers are designed to ease you into it and teach you how to make each thing some things you won't be able to make until you've done that first quest for it but after that you can just you can just make it you can just make it and so i finished the first chapter of it um like yesterday uh, morning i think it was and I was like, "Wow, that's that's really cool." And it sort of the chapter ends as if it's its own its own game, its own story. You know, it's like it's really cool. So it's, that was its own isolated little piece of game. And after that, it said, "Do you want to leave this uh, this place?" And I didn't know what was going to happen. So I, I but I, I sort of started building, and I thought the, the curiosity got the better of me. So I went off and I, I left the place. I explored over the mountain where there was a light, and then it went right. Congratulations, left my save game. It said this is, and it went. This is um, your score for chapter one, and it said, so here's your score. How many times did you die? How many uh, days did it take you to get the to def- you know do the final objective? Um, and then it said challenges that you did, and it was sort of like challenges: build the build the get the base to level five in twenty days. Um, don't die. Um, kill three dragons around the land. Things like that. So there was a list of and challenges. Can you see these challenges while you're playing? Not on the first on the can- first time through. It, let, it, it lets you just explore. But I did what? find some of these things on my own anyway. Right, right, okay. But then after it, you can go back to your save game and you can explore the challenges. But some of them, like like complete it in 20 days, you'd have to start a new game for that chapter to do, if that makes sense. Because you, you couldn't go back... I couldn't have gone back to my 60 nights in the world save game to try and complete the objective of do the objective in 20 nights. You know what I mean? So yeah, for yeah, that, no, I, so I would have had to start the um, the chapter again, but that's fine. You know, it just gives you safe slots for it. And then, so it, it, it opened. It, it kind of went back to the title screen and said, "Ah, now there's a new land for you to explore." And I was like, "Oh wow!" So it's a whole new adventure. Now the bad thing about this, and it does warn you, is that when you start a new adventure, you lose all your stuff that you've made in the other adventure. So you're starting again from scratch, and there's different resources and different things to find. So it sort of seems to be following that adventure template as well. <laughs> Um, what, so so there's no there's no like Dragon Quest movers that can move all the stuff that you've made in like kind of level one to like level two. Dragon Quest Man and Van. <laughs> yeah. Dragon Man and Dragon. Um Is that is that DLC that you just won't buy? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, that's the thing. So I just I just start with nothing because I would just refuse to buy the DLC. Um so each it seems each of these um separate chapters are different continents around the, the game world. And you 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 your reason for doing each one is for a grand purpose of defeating the Dragon Lord, which is all part of the story. But apart from that, it's just it's just great fun. And if that wasn't enough, once I completed the first chapter and the second chapter appeared and, and all that stuff, it also opened another extra bit that I totally wasn't expecting, because I haven't read anything about this game. Um, a creative mode appears, and it says, pick this if you want to just create and build to your heart's content. Oh, that's good. And share your designs online and also... Look at other people. Look at other people's designs in your world as well. So yeah, it's just it's just fantastic. I really love it. If uh, you should, I just encourage anybody that likes this sort of base building kind of creative games, and if you like RPGs as well, uh, it's a great fusion. If you, if you like Minecraft's not quite for you because it hasn't got story, or mm-hmm. if you love Minecraft anyway but you want something different, um, or if you just like. If you just want an RPG that's different and you've never really played Minecraft at all, I'd recommend wholeheartedly to have a look at it. It's, it's really great. So the when it comes bl- to the actual chapters, how yeah. how do you feel about losing that progress? Like, oh, well, as it's okay done. because it's. I, I sort of thought, oh dear, I don't like this. But then I realised because it opens up the next chapter, it's like you're starting a new game. But you can always go back to your save game as the last chapter and carry on pottering around, gathering resources, yeah. building your, your base in there. So that's sort of, that's its own entity, if you like. So you can just leave that and you can carry on doing stuff in that save game as much as you want. But it just opens up the opportunity to dive into the second chapter. Yeah. And I presume that will follow on, that when I've completed that, 
if I love that town, I can carry on building, you know, in the in the world once it's been saved from the darkness, or whatever, and it's so everyone's happy, and I can just carry on building and being friends with the party and the people that I've met in there. Um, but it will have opened up the third chapter, which again will start again with new people, new base, a new land, new new uh, conquests, and new um, new resources and new hazards to to overcome. And I, I so. I don't know how many chapters there is in it, but each one's kind of a breath of fresh air, completely different environment. You know, it's not the same old, it's not the same old stuff you're gathering. Whether or not you're gathering sort of a green twig instead of a yellow twig to make the same thing, I'm not sure about that. It might even be that we we'll make different things, but I'm not far enough in to know. The only thing that I wish it had would be local or online multiplayer where you could get your town. You know, and if you if you guys had it, we could all you know meet at, meet each other in in one of our towns. And all build together and quest together, but I know that's getting a bit, a bit MMO MMORPG, but it would be a great addition. Um, it's a it's a good game. So is there local play? Has, has Sam been grabbing a controller and kind of helping you build as well? Yeah, he, he has. He's been enjoying it too. But in the end, he sort of just preferred to watch me. I think it's because of the graphical style. It's just like a cartoon for him. What Sam's mm-hmm. been doing. <laughs> What Sam's been doing, he's got um, a rekindle the interest in Rogue Legacy, the roguelike. Um, we're playing it on PS4. And so he made me erase our save game and start it again. And what he's doing is making me fight the bosses, which I don't know if you've ever played Rogue Legacy, but the bosses are extremely hard. Mm. And I've killed, like, he, he, <laughs> he just says, Daddy, do this. He's like, Daddy, kill her, destroy uh, Kidder, which is the first boss, and it's really difficult. So I'm like, okay, Sam, and like, so he plays it too, and he, he it's a roguelike and it's procedurally generated. So Sam will get to the door to the boss, and then he say, "Here you go, Daddy, you killed Kidder," and I'm like, okay, Sam, and I just sit there, <laughs> depending on how lucky or skillful would pick insert your word, and I'll sit there <laughs> for like I don't know half an hour to. An hour, and sometimes getting very angry, but trying not to be angry because I don't want to be, show Sam a bad impression of trying to do that. So, as as part of this little thing that is Sam's finding very amusing at the moment, we've destroyed one, two, two, two normal bosses, and one of the neo bosses. Because once you destroy a boss, you can then fight it in its second form, which is even harder. Now the first bosses. You, you, on this game you level up you can level up your attack power you can level up your defence you can level up your magic you can swap swords you can do all different things to enhance your character and when you fight a boss the first time if you can't do it the first time you could just sit there and grind and you'd be able to kill the boss eventually Okay, by gathering gold in the castle and then spending it on, on perks and levelling up but the second boss forms are not they don't take into account your character they are chosen by the devs you get a character that's given to you with a set, you know, it's like, right, he's going to have this health, he's going to have this mana, he's going to have this armour. And it's kind of like, that's the character that you need to build this boss with, and they are not generous with the powers that you've got. And it is so hard. It is so hard, man, guys. It's so hard. So I did the first one, Neo Kidder, which is the the big brother of Kidder. And Kidder was difficult on its own. Is that the one with the big eye? The eye is yeah. surrounded by lots of mini eyes. Yeah. No, it's, it's one big eye in the middle and it fires out loads of sort of That's it. fire. And the beginning one is, is tough. But the second one's called Neo Kidder. And heavens above, <sighs> it's hard. Because there's no pattern. I was, I was saying this to Sam the other day. I said, Sam, the trouble is, and I said, I don't mean to, this to sound like I'm a cop-out. But the reason these are so hard is because there's no pattern. I said, you know, like these other games where there's a boss, and you learn the pattern. Once you learn the, it's hard at first, but you learn the pattern, and then you can sort of you use that knowledge to your advantage. And I said, these bosses, they don't have a pattern. All this is down to is your skill and patience, and it makes it difficult. <laughs> it makes it so difficult. Um, it, but it's hugely rewarding when <laughs> when you succeed. But yeah, yesterday we found the doorway to the second form of the, the next boss. And Sam just went, Daddy, do it. And I sat there for an hour trying. And I said, Sammy, you're not bored of me trying. But I was getting closer. <laughs> and he was like, no, just keep trying. And this one, this was a big flaming f- sort of fireball thing that takes about a quarter of the screen. It's that big, big round thing. It flies around the screen and it drops green fireballs in its wake wherever it flies around the screen. And the play area is probably about hmm, three, sc- three by two screens across. Okay. So you've got an area that you can jump about and stuff. 
and the, fa- the the flames that he leaves behind last for quite a while, but they do disappear eventually. And you can make all these flames disappear something like four times by pressing triangle, which does a does a it's like a a Skyrim roar, Faru dose he goes, and all the flames disappear. But you can only do that four times. You can only get hit four times by him as well before it's game over. And it's just you and your sword. And when you hit him, you take a minuscule amount of health off him. Oh my goodness me! It's hard, but it's good. But man, it's hard. So. <laughs> You have a level of dedication to this thing that I think I've lost a long time ago. This it sounds almost just like a, yeah, another just the bosses themselves are a roguelike. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard, but I encourage anyone. You know, so I would love it if one of you guys could play it, so I could talk to you about it because I'm sort of on my own with it, really. You know, I could <laughs> talk to Sam about it, but it's not the same. But yeah, so getting back to the point, Sam has been watching me on Dragon Quest Builders, but all he's wanted to play really for the whole Christmas period is on once the PS4 came out. And I went through the library of games. He, he saw uh, Rogue Legacy, and he was like, oh, I want to play that. So he's quite happy. When, he, when he's not been playing Rogue Legacy, we've been putting blankets on with safety pins and getting swords, <laughs> pretend swords, and playing Rogue Legacy and running around and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, there's that. So that's Dragon Quest Builders. And the other game I've got for Christmas was Last Guardian. Last Guardian, which, which, which seems all right. It so, seems all right. I can mm. say this is one that you've been waiting for a while, and I know a certain other spark around this mm. table has <laughs> might, yeah. might have other opinions on this. Yeah, I've been I've been waiting for this since it was announced. So you know, it's a long time. It's a long time. Pre Sam, pre pre Sam by loads. Yeah, pre Sam by loads, yeah. man. I mean, waiting for it for what ten years? Is it ten years in development? And like we we found out about it about eight years ago. Yeah, about eight or about seven or eight years ago. Absolutely. I mean, like yeah, I think we've said time and time on this uh, this pod. You know, I can remember Darren with like the two of us were kind of geeking out over this trailer that we saw on E3. You know, it was kind of seven eight years ago, and the the level of excitement then uh, was the same level of excitement we had this year before it was coming out. Yeah, yeah. And for me, I think the I think the pull of a game speaks volumes. And having not gone back to Last Guardian after the sort of putting it on for I put it on once and then I put it on again. Um, but after that, I've been playing Dragon Quest Builders or Rogue mm-hmm. Legacy for Sam. I mean, you know, I obviously just play whatever Sam wants, really, or let him, you know, when in gaming time when he's around. Um, but that tells me something. Um, regardless of how much I wanted to love it, and it seems a good game, it looks great and all that. But as I say, it's Dragon Quest Builders I've been wanting to play, and I think that yeah. says it all. Because if it was if it was that good. I mean, it seems okay and everything. I don't. I'm not far enough to even know. But wouldn't I want to play it? Wouldn't I be hooked straight away? Do you know what I mean? So, um, so, so what what have you found? Sort of like bouncing off, like because is is there a specific aspect, or it's just in generally hasn't got its claws into you? I think that uh, in general, I just probably haven't quite put the time in yet, and the pull of Dragon Quest Builders has has got has just distracted me. It's it's too good. It's too good. It's, it's, I would never have thought I'd be saying this, but that Dragon Quest Builders game, there's something about it that just makes me want to play it all the time. And I'm play, if I'm play, if I tried to play Last Guardian, which I did, I actually just thought I was just found myself thinking what I could be doing building my base over in Dragon yeah. Quest Builders. And maybe, maybe I've not put the time in yet, and that's fine because I, and, and it might grow on me. You know, when I played it for a few more hours, I probably played it for about three hours, but um. I've only got so much time to game, and it's just seemed cool, but it's it's not the one grabbing my attention. I only got a certain amount of time, and like at night when Sam's gone to bed, and I've sat down and thought, "Oh man, what should we do?" And I've got these two games in front of me. It's amazing, and I'm surprised to say it myself, but it's been Dragon Quest Builders every time, and I think that's because of the creative and free, open nature of that game, whereas. The Last Guardian is very... I mean, I don't mind linear experiences, you know. I love Uncharted and things like that. I love single-player adventures. But because it's more Ico-esque than Shadow of the Colossus, for instance, because really it seems to me it's one of those games, and as I say, I haven't played loads of it yet, but I get the impression that basically I'm going to hit a brick wall every so often through funneling through the story while Due I to fig- a bad control system well, is when you're going to hit a brick wall <laughs> I don't, I, that's what, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, happened that, with me you know yeah, I mean that, for me I mean I've been playing there with a couple of games I've been kind of flip-flopping between but it's not the fact that I've been you know I 
Last Guardian for me, I was Boxing Day morning, came downstairs, my nephew was already downstairs playing um, Skylanders Imaginators, so he was off, he was playing that, and I said to him, I said, oh, do you want to see this game? And I kind of gave him the pitch of Last Guardian. So Ed and I just sat there, everyone else was asleep, you know, we were there, it was like half past seven in the morning, we were just kind of playing, and we started playing um, uh, Last Guardian, started playing with it, and... And he was like, why do you have to keep kind of spinning that round? And he was asking all these questions. And then we were like bumping into things. And, and then we were trying to get, um, we were trying to get Trico to do something and it wouldn't do it. And, and after about kind of about an hour, Ed and I, Ed just looked at me and he just said, it's pretty stupid, isn't it? You know, he said, this game is like pretty. And I was like, do you know what, Ed? You're right. I was like, let's play VR instead. You know, and because we, we both just sat there. We both like came to this conclusion. Myself and a 12 year old came to this conclusion. And bear in mind, Ed has just been there. He's been playing. Skylanders Imaginators um, all morning already you know and he was just like I'd rather go back to you he was like I'm going to play this and I was, and that's when I said oh, do you want to try some VR um, because he was like this is just stupid he said and, and the, the funniest thing that Ed said it was uh, it doesn't even look that good does it <laughs> I was like no it doesn't no, you, know? And, you know and I was like from a 12 year old you know this is just like kind of cutting you know but it was it was the control system was so clunky I was like okay what do you want I'll throw this barrel at you it was like making a noise it was like you need to feed the uh, trico so I was like okay I've got this barrel threw the barrel at, at this stupid dog bird and, and then uh, did nothing so I picked the barrel up again threw it at him and this was bouncing off of him nothing and then i kind of stepped back a bit threw it again and then it started eating the barrel and i was like how bad are we that that you can tell that this was a playstation 2 playstation 3 game that we have to kind of get to a certain point and that's where we can throw that barrel that just by putting it around trico which you'd expect in a modern game he he couldn't take that barrel that i had to actually kind of step back find that kind of hot point and then throw it from there and and then you know and that happened quite a few times we're like okay i think we need to do this you know and ed and i was just like trying to work it out we were like okay let's give it the benefit of the doubt that's just the you know this is the start let's just but then we got to a point where like no this is just stupid (laughs) you know we were like we had no idea what we're doing so instead we just went and played lethal vr instead Oh, man. It's just because you're not good at b- playing games, man. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I was going to give him the controller at one point and go, there you go, why don't you ever try? <laughs> yeah, but- no, I'm only kidding. You're, you're totally right. You know, it's weird. I tell you what, you, 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 I was trying to think as you spoke because it's like the controls are really clunky. And I mean, Horrible. clunky is understated. Horrible is um, in the controls. You know, for me, I press that eject button, I put the game back into its boomerang box, and then I just put it in the post Threw box. it in the, in the post. I am done with that game, and I am so relieved that I didn't get sucked in that hype that I had just before Last Guardian came out I was there one night I was like I'm going to just download it I've been waiting 10 years for this I'm going to I'm going to buy it I'm so glad I didn't because you know speaking from the person who wasted money on No Man's Sky this would have been a bigger waste of money I think wow you know, it's just it is bad I said, wow. I'm, I'm glad I just waited for you to because I I, <laughs> I I read a couple of initial reviews and it was really weird because they were getting quite high scores it was recommended but this this is comes the value of reading reviews rather than just looking at the number or the score <laughs> yeah. attributed at the end. It just kept saying like things like finicky or awkward or like you have to try and persuade the animal to do what you want. And it's like that really started setting alarm bells ringing for me. Like I'm, I'm still going to try and borrow it off someone at work. That's where I'm at with it at the moment. But it just kept sounding like it was a Nintendogs thing, but actually on an adventure. And I think I don't want that level of ambiguity. I think I think it, if if it works first time, or if you feel like you've got a bond with an animal that you can then push forward with, then that's great because there, there is connection there. But for every one or two people that must click with, it sounds like there's far more just getting absolutely sick to death with this dog bird thing that doesn't actually do what they wanted to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think a lot of these reviews as well, it's kind of has, you know, you could hear it in Darren's voice. You know, he he wants to like this he, because he's been waiting long enough. So I think if you're writing a review, like if Darren was writing a review, um, and I'm speaking for you, Darren, but if, if for me, if I was writing a review without kind of, I'd be like, I really want something, you know, I really want this to be good because that's when I fired it up, I actually got quite excited. You know, when it kind of actually starts and it goes for the, the cutscene, the opening cutscene, I was quite excited at doing this. And then, you know, 
know, I was like to Ed, I was like, right, you know, come on, we're going to enjoy this. You know, we went in going, this is going to be fun. You know, we've got a couple of hours before anyone else wakes up. So we're going to really kind of get into this and have an enjoyment. And I thought, this is this is actually quite a moment between me and my nephew. And then that just kind of disappeared quite quite quickly. We ended up just throwing knives at, uh, at, <laughs> at the pop-up targets instead in Lethal VR. Yeah, I mean, I found that the, the creature Trico did what I wanted most of the time but then I, I probably haven't gone as far as you I don't know um, but yeah the, the control is, is bad and I had to I had to overcompensate which I'm, I'm happy to do but it's kind of you shouldn't have to anymore you know it's a thing of the past having to overcompensate the nearest control scheme that I can I can liken it to rack, racking my brains for something that controlled terribly and, the, and this game that I'm going to mention doesn't get away with it is um, I don't know if you ever played Mickey's Castle, Castle of Illusion that 3D mm. game, and it's just really floaty. And that's a platform game. And, you know, because of the terrible control, you can't make the jump, so you'll, you'll, you'll miss the edge of a jump. And I hated that game for that. Um, this one sort of puts that as if it's hiding behind some kind of artistic aesthetic. And I don't know. And it's also with the creature, do it because loads of people, include, you know, it was like you, Anthony, say that it doesn't do what you say. And I think, is that by design? Or is it just rubbish? You know, is it just bad design? Is it just that the creature they couldn't make the creature do it, do what you want? Can the game not work it out? And so it fails a few times, but you'll get there in the end, and they just decided to say, "Oh, it's because it'll do what it wants." So because there's a it- cynical part of me saying that when you have a creature that large in like working around the environment, it's like, is it, is it just going to be finicky to try and get to the points that you really want it to? Like, it might not have the subtle, slight movements that you find with, uh, you know, like the, your, your, uh, the girl you're dragging around in Ico, you know, she's very tiny, she can move, she can pivot on the spot, whereas actually trying to persuade this beast just to, yeah. like, like for your barrel, Anthony, just like to just edge over like two inches to be in the perfect spot, whereas actually you'd have to get up, go back, walk around, turn around, come back... Maybe it was just a case of, yeah, just getting him moving that tiny distance is too much, so we'll blame you for putting the barrel there. Yeah, and it's hard enough to get anything done because it's so indulgent because they love the creature that they've created. And and rightly so, it is beautiful. It's all feathery and the eyes are wonderfully um, (sighs) textured. And... uh, but the game's too busy trying to swing the camera so that that everybody sees what Trico's up to. And I'm like, no, I want to look forward. I'm... Don't want, and you know I go you edge down a path and it's like right I'm just I'm just trying to work out what's in this room. All of a sudden I'm not touching anything and the camera just swings round because Trico's coming, and it's like, <laughs> all right I'm over it now. I've got Trico. I can look at him whenever I want. I'm quite happy with him. I'll pet him and stuff and I can ride him. Don't swing the camera around to look at him when I'm trying to concentrate on a puzzle room. You know just leave it out, will you? I want to look down here. What what are you doing swinging the camera around for me? I've got yeah. a, I've got a camera on the right stick. I don't need you to do that. So, yeah, I mean, as I say, I haven't played enough of it probably, but maybe I'll feel some magic after a few more hours. I'm not I'm not holding out much hope, but it's cool. But my, my gaming time's not falling in the direction of that game at the moment. No, and the fact that it's not X to jump, yeah, does my how many in. times? I don't know how many times. Then, what if they decided Dragon, to jump? Dragon Quest Builders is circle to jump as well, actually, but that is. It's, I tell you it's what, triangle. It's, it's triangle to jump yeah. in Last Guardian. So it's Blah, completely, blah. it's completely, and you can't, you can't. The first thing I did when they were like, "Go over to here and jump," I was like, "Triangle to jump," and I was like, "Right, okay, control system. Let me just kind of change this." And you can't do it. You, you know, can't. It, like, that is another indulgence. But yeah. it is, it is the same as Shadow of the Colossus. I'll just add that in. It's the same. It, do, it doesn't so mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's right at all. But maybe they could argue that. It's part of that series, <laughs> so we have to have that because <laughs> to continue I, that. I think I didn't like the way the camera panned. There was there was another control thing that I didn't like, and I think it was that I wanted the left and right of the right stick camera. I wanted mm. to um, invert that to the other way, and right. guess what? Not allowed. No right. option for it. And the tool tips pop up all the time. When you know, it's like I know that if I if I had to play press whatever to hang off a ledge or whatever, but actually, <laughs> the amount of times I did jump in the wrong button, it's probably handy, but it doesn't seem you can turn off the tool tips that keep appearing all the time as well. So, I'm not impressed, but no. you know what? I'm just happy, right? I've got it, and this is my I'm actually happy that I bought it because you know, I said, didn't I? I said I might just buy it anyway, just because it's been a journey. Um, for me, a lot longer than No Man's Sky was. It's out, I've got it. 
and for that, I'm grateful. I've got the closure. It's out. It's on my. It's in my blooming shelf. It's on my shelf, and I'm happy about that. I wonder how long it'll be on that shelf before I pop it into the play- PS4 again. So it's so it's, it's probably- only Final Fantasy Seven, Shenmue Three, and <laughs> yeah, I c- that- you got you got one out of your three vaporwares. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope. Let's hope it's the um, the, the lowest setting of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, yeah, so move on. Let's move on. More positive note from yeah, uh, yeah, from yeah. The but last you know, million. it seems all right. I, not quite. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it broad, more broadly when I've played a bit more. Um, but at the moment, it's not looking good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, what Anthony said it, to put me off it even yeah. more. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been mean, going into it. I was like, I'm going to finish this game. This is going to be a game that I'm going to finish because, as you say, Darren, you know, I've been waiting for this for years. So I, I just want to just finish it. Just, just closure done, and I finish it. But I could not. I've got as I'll get to in a moment. I've got too many good games that I'm playing now to waste time on on something like this you know I just yeah. I just do not have the luxury to waste 10 hours on on something that's going to frustrate and and annoy me yeah this is the thing as well I, two quick points first of all yeah you I'm short of time too you've got to really discriminate what games I'm going to play and you know what fun is a primary reason to play a game of which I found pretty quickly I was going to be it, the balance would probably be more frustration than fun with it because I was just try, too busy trying to like just solve a puzzle that with no clue how to solve to, to proceed um, and the other point was as you say, you know, this is a bit of a moment. I put this on in front of a few people, for a few family were around at Christmas Day, and I put it on as a bit of a showpiece. They were bored to tears in five minutes. Hmm. You know, this amazing thing that was that was amazing to us, and maybe, maybe I thought it was amazing because I was still clutching onto that initial amazement. But even to my parents, they're just like, so what? Big creature, so what? Dull, yeah. dull, and va- Claire's like, the, the environment's dull. That kind of environment that uh, Team Ico did used to be kind of lush and green, even though it was always a bit um, muted. But it was kind of lush and green temple. And it, back on in PS2 with Shadow of the Colossus, that was amazing. And Claire's just like, it's drab. It's drab environment, drab gameplay. Hmm. Anyway, right, so moving on. Uh, I've also been playing v- more and more, I think I mentioned it last time, of VR Dyna Duo, which is sort of an asymmetric version of Overcooked on VR, on the Vive. And i tell you something that's great fun. I've been having some top laughs over Christmas with that, with uh, one person being the waiter on the pad, looking at the screen, and the other guy in VR in charge of making the burgers on the grill. Um, so w- w- whether it's uh, two burgers with cheese, tomato sauce, or another burger that's just a burger, or another burger that's burger, cheese, burger, cheese, cucumber, tomato sauce, and then getting them all on the plates and getting them out to the survey thing. Bing, bing, on the bell. Come on, mate, come on. And then the, your, your friend who's playing comes over as the waiter and serves them. That's a ton of fun. They had a, a Christmas update as well, um, adding some sort of festive burgers on there. It's very, very Turkey overcooked. Turkey burgers. Turkey burgers, you know, something. They never <laughs> thought of that. They never thought of that. Um, and they should have. So that's been, that's been great fun. Um, if you're a VR guy or a Vive person... I'd, I'd highly recommend getting that. I got in touch with the developer to ask if it was coming on, out on PSVR, and they said that they are working on it. So that's good for you guys. You know, it, It's not online, so it's not like we could hook up, but mm. it's, it's great in the same room. It's a couch co-op. You know, you guys with your um, your partners, would have a, I'm sure you'd have an absolute blast and just a bit of a change from Overcooked because one of you is actually in the kitchen. And they said they're just waiting for uh, Sony's sort of um, approval process to go through. And oh, so, right. so, so you guys, I hope will have an opportunity to cool. have a go with that because it really is fantastic. So, so how does how does the feel of actually putting the burgers and stuff together work? Because from the, from the trailers, it looked like it was it was almost like the uh, job simulator where you're reaching out, grabbing ingredients, and then just trying to stack them in front of you. Was it, did it get deeper than that, or is it like Overcooked, where like the pressure of merely getting out on time is the big focus? Yeah, it's the it's the pressure. At first, it's very easy. You know, as it teaches you the systems, but really, you reach out. You've got a stack of burgers next to a grill, and you can sort of part cook the burgers as well, and then stack them ready for a quick cooking later. I, I realised the other day, but if you leave a burger out too long after it's been cooked, it goes mouldy, and you get all flies around it. You've got to throw it in the bin. So it is very much like your station is very much like a job simulator station, but around you, you've got the grill, you've got the burgers, you've got the plates. You've got the bottoms of buns and you've got the tops of buns under a shelf at the counter at the front. You've got the bell to let the waiter know you're ready, but you just shout because you're in the same room. And then on the right, you've got 
ketchup and mustard and then further round on your right hand side you've got um things as it as it gets more advanced you get like cucumbers and mushrooms and things like that and cheese and then you get a big old menu that's stuck on the wall behind you and stuck on the uh, the countertop in front of you that you can refer to. So as the waiter goes and finds out what... Because the, the person on the pad who's looking at the screen, they'll they'll move the robot waiter up to um, a couple of robots at a table and it'll show a picture of the burger along with a number. So they'll say, right, I want two number fives so I can look at number five on the menu. Um, or they could say, Daz, burger, <laughs> cheese, burger, mustard, cheese, lettuce top but it's in the end you realize that you can't do it like that and they need to say number five two number fives and then you're looking right two number fives so each of those has got two burgers so i need to get four burgers on the grill and the grill will only take about four burgers anyway but as you get better at it you're looking ahead you catch up to date the wait has gone out you've cooked the stuff one order's gone off and then you're looking for the people coming through the door so three people come through the door and you're like right okay there's going to be a minimum there of three burgers so you'll get three on straight away you get the plates out you get the bottom of the buns out ready it's like right what what do you, what, what do you need and they'll tell you and you go right i've already got three burgers ready so bah, 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 bah. so you're sort of half there um and then also on the other player side as well as giving out the uh giving the orders it gets more complex that they start asking for drinks that the waiter needs to provide. So then the waiter, as well as taking the orders and shouting them over to me or whoever's in the, the VR kitchen, has to go and grab the drinks from a, a drinks machine. There's three different kinds of drinks. There's a cola drink, a green drink, say lime, uh, and then say an orange aid, and they've got to get the right drink and take it through. And then later on, there's also apple pie that you can give from that same station. So the waiter's got his work cut out there as well. And then just more and more people are just coming into the restaurant all the time. So it's a constant turnover of getting them getting them um, what they want. And the longer they wait, the less happy they get. So at first they're happy, then they're sort of, you know, getting a bit impatient, then they get angry, and then they leave. And the quicker you get them their meal, the more money you get, so you get a better score at the end. And it's, it's just great fun. It ramps up the pressure. As you start playing it, it's really good because it's nice and easy and sedate, you know, and you're doing it, and, you, and it gives you that feeling. You're like, yeah, this is good. I'm enjoying this. I can do this. And then slowly and sneakily, all of a sudden, it, it, it's got a real good curve. You know, you, you learn each system, and then all of a sudden, it just powers on the pressure with just increasing the numbers in the restaurant. And you can do it, but you start to forget, you know, and the burgers start getting burnt. And <laughs> you start getting shouted at by the waiter, and then you're shouting at the waiter because you're like, what, what do I need to make? And it's just, it just, it kind of sounds like overcooked. It's different because of the way that you can, you have to communicate. Well, I suppose, you, you know, it's... It's very similar, but it's just it's just great to be in VR and do it. I think it's a great game. It's a great game, and hopefully you'll be able to see if it comes over to PSVR, guys. You really you're really gonna have to have a look and talk yeah. to me about it because it's it's good. You know, one one to play together. You know, a great a great party game. Anyone comes round because it starts forum off so- for arguments. Yeah, a new forum for arguments. But but on the easy mode, if if you if you were demoing your VR, you can get somebody in there as a chef, and they're going to love it, and it's easy, and you can just play your easy levels as much as you want. You can also have just this level, like a, a just a mess about level, where there's no there's no rules, and you can just cook burgers and send them out, and there's no time limits and things like that, just to get people acquainted. It's just good fun. It's just good fun. Um, yeah. So that that that's about it for me. Three games took me half an hour. Sorry about that. <laughs> No problems at all. I mean, for me, over Christmas, I have I had a bit of a telltale. Um, I had a bit of a telltale kind of playthrough because I had the last episode of Batman um, to to finish, and luckily they'd patched it because I think I said previous on a previous pod where they I started playing episode five, but it was really kind of clunky. It was really kind of jerky. Um, so I just put it away. I was like, right, I'm not, but uh, I'm not going to play it. So I thought I'll just have a quick look. I think on, on the first day of gaming, um, I thought I'd just have a quick look at Batman to see if it's better and it did get a patch and it was a lot better um, so I managed to kind of get through that and finish off Telltale Batman um, I, I really enjoyed it I thought it was really good um, it started strong I think the first three episodes were absolutely fantastic and it just kind of it just kind of got a little kind of a whittled off a little bit at the end but I was uh, all in all it was a really good it was a really good Telltale but I think kind of if I listen back to a couple of pods ago I was like this is the best Telltale game ever <laughs> you know but <laughs> as I got to like episode four and, and five I'm like yeah it's okay it's good <laughs> so uh so so is that wrapped up then is that is, is there yes. gonna be like an epilogue or anything like that 
no, nope, that's it. They're not going to do like the, the final part, part one and part two, <laughs> as they have done with uh, the first part of Walking Dead, part one and part two. Um, <laughs> but no, that's it. And they, you know, they did say that they were going to get the five episodes out by the um, end of the year, and they did it. Yeah, um, so which was really good. So. So, so, so looking back in hindsight now, how did you feel? Because I, I get the feeling it's far more Bruce Wayne focused than Batman in the end, or at least gives you the option to do both, which I thought was a really interesting aspect from the outside in. Absolutely, and I love that bit about it. There, there's probably about four, four or five times that um, you get the opportunity to go. You know, should I go as Bruce Wayne or should I go as Batman? You know, you get to choose which one that you want to go. And and I've kind of mixed it up a little bit, and it's quite nice because at the end it tells you the percentage of your Batman to ah, Bruce classic. Wayne. So which was really, which was really, I love those bits at the end of an episode of um, Telltale when I just find out kind of you know how I've done against everyone else. I mean, one of the interesting things was. Um, and I think it was like episode three. They had a Two Face. You know, they showed what Two Face looks like in the game. But I, because I never, because I didn't do something, uh, there was a part of the game, and then I chose to kind of be Bruce Wayne, and I chose to kind of handle it diplomatically. Um, I never got to see Two Face, so he was still Harvey Dent um, in in kind of my game, which I thought was just absolutely fantastic. That um, I never actually got to see Two Face. He he had an accident, but never fully changed into into the Two-Face character, so which I thought was really cool that they actually kind of stretched it out for another two episodes with me seeing um, Harvey Dent instead of seeing Two-Face for those those parts. Cool. Could, could you actually see where the join was at that point? Like, you could see what would have happened if Two-Face had been there and Harvey hadn't, or was it just completely separate scenes? It seemed complete... I, I, I knew the scene that could have changed him to Two Face, but for the rest of it, um, I didn't really, I couldn't really kind of tell what if if Two Face if they just replace Harvey Dent with Two Face in those characters, or it would be a completely separate uh, part. So I think it just branched off at that point. Yeah. I wasn't uh, the, the problem is with with games like this and Life is Strange and things like that. I don't want to go back and and ruin my save because at one point I was thinking I'll go back to there and see and do the Never other thing back. and see what happens, but I just can't do it. I just can't go back. So that I, is your story. That is your Bruce Wayne. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like I say, it was really good. I enjoyed it. But when I finished it, I was kind of, I was happy that it was over. Um, I was happy that it was over. And it was a good, it was a good Batman, mo- a good Batman story. Good take on the Batman. But uh, and I hope they do more. But uh, it just it started strong, but it didn't finish as strong as but the, the first couple of episodes. And then you stumbled straight onto The Walking Dead. This is some yes. telltale dedication at this point. Absolutely. I mean, I loved the the whole Telltale games, and it and that's what I thought because at one point I thought, now did I did Batman kind of taper off at the end because I was fed up with the Telltale bit, or was it the story? And I think, and, and by jumping into the Walking Dead, it was definitely the story because Walking Dead and New Frontier Part One and Part Two um, are absolutely fantastic. You know, I'm back to where I was with Telltale Batman. The first two episodes, like this is the best, but it's really good. Um, it's very it's very dark um they have the engine does seem to have been updated from batman it's definitely updated from the previous walking dead uh, because the zombies are now they're now individual they're very different now where before they had a very cartoony look on about them but even the zombies or the walkers as they call them have um, have changed but the the Walking Dead New Frontier starts with this opening scene where you have this family there and they're mourning the death of their father, their grandfather, and then suddenly this girl, and I think this has been in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler, but the girl comes out, she's got a glass of water, and they're like, oh, are you thirsty? I mean, no, granddad's thirsty, he's up and about, and you suddenly your heart just starts going, because you know exactly what has just happened, you know, this man has passed away and he's now turned into a walker, and this girl is walking towards the room and I was just so you know it was just so scary and, and Nicola was playing Skyrim and suddenly I noticed that she'd pause Skyrim because she was watching even though I had like headphones on she was watching what what I was doing and she was reading the subtitles and she was like wow that's really tense you know and it was really interesting it was a real good builder for the the start of uh, of this of this series cool and then, so, and so again is it another strong start do you think they'll carry it through 
Well, this one, like I say, the first two episodes, very strong start. A really interesting thing is that it's a Walking Dead game, but you're not playing as Clementine. Um, you're playing as Javi or Javier. You're playing as him, and um, it's a very interesting take. And you can you're interacting with Clementine all the time, but you're not actually playing as Clementine at the moment. But I guess um, in the first series, you never played as her either. So it's almost like a no. return to. Yeah, absolutely. It's a return to the original, but it's so far the story is I cannot wait for part three um, because I am just so hooked on this story. It's absolutely fantastic. Cool. So that was my Walking Dead fest. Um, and then after that, I've really been, as I was saying to, to earlier on, I've really been flip flopping between um, I wanted to play Hitman. I'm like, I'm going to play Hitman. I'm going to play Hitman. But for Christmas, one of my Christmas presents, um, Nicola bought me uh, Watch Dogs 2. So I've fired up Watch Dogs 2. And what I've been pretty much doing is I've been flip flopping between Forza Horizon Blizzard Mountain DLC, um, which is absolutely fantastic, and Watch Dogs 2. So I've been kind of playing Watch Dogs. If I get a little bit fed up with that or or if I get to the point where I get to the end of a mission, I've been flipping over to Forza Horizon and just kind of doing the... Because it's an event. Blizzard Mountain is an event. So I've been doing the event, getting the the stars needed to go to the next level uh, and then unlock more races, more challenges, more drifting, etc. And and I've been, I've been loving that. But Watch Dogs 2 has, um, has, has very much kind of taken up all of that kind of Hitman time that I, I was thinking <laughs> about doing. Um, but similar to you, it's quite funny when you were saying that you could just wander around in Hitman. I found myself in about the first hour of Watch Dogs. I was just driving around San Francisco. I was jumped in boats and was just sailing around the bay. Um, there's a Nick and I. We we kind of love San Francisco. It's one of those places that we go back to quite a lot, kind of to holiday. And uh, there's a place called Sausalito. Um, so the first thing I did, the moment you get control, it's saying, right, you need to go here. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be there in a moment. I just want to go to see if this Sausalito is in this game. So I jumped into a boat, dro- like, uh, sailed across the bay and went, and then, there you are. You go to Marin Can- County and then you go to Sausalito and there it was. And I was like, this is just amazing. And I was like, I called Nicola in and I was like, oh, look at this, look at this. You know, and I just I walked around kind of Sausalito and it's very, it's very close. Um, we're like, oh, that's where that Starbucks is. And I was like, that wasn't the Starbucks. It was something completely different. Oh, well, like, there's there where that wine shop is. You know, and it was just, it was very interesting just to kind of see that and knowing something or knowing a place so well, especially Especially some of the smaller Sausalito, um, and to see how they've kind of just changed a few things and just other, but it's, made it fit, I guess, more than anything else. Yes, yes, absolutely. But it's just it's really good. You know, it's such a great game. Um, the first mission on Watch Dogs Two, the first kind of full mission, is is amazing. You you get it's a mission where you um, there's a trailer that drops and it's kind of like some big in this world and it's called Cyber Driver and it points it kind of makes fun of DeadSec slightly and it's got this kind of self driving car and it's and so they the the company or the the, the, the people that you're working with they didn't like that you know they kind of took, made made fun of them so they're like right what we want you to do is we want you to steal the um the script we also want you to get the emails of this of this comp of the uh, film company um and so uh, that was the first thing so kind of go to there and it's lucas arts it's the lucas arts building and the last time i went to san francisco i went to the yoda fountain went into lucas arts walked around the foyers and stood next <laughs> and i'm like this is my holiday you know there's the starbucks that we went in and there was people all around me kind of with star wars books and you know there's me with my chewy my dark bunny chewy t-shirt People probably go, yeah, he's a tourist. <laughs> so I take it they didn't have Yoda in D- Watch Dogs 2, though? No, no. So I, I did, I, I tweeted out a photo which was kind of because you can take selfies in this game. So there's a my selfie with Yoda in the background, and then my <laughs> selfie in the game with no Yoda. And I'm like, where's the fountain? Uh, but it was so you did that. You had to, so that really kind of introduces you to the drone. That introduces you to this little kind of a little wheelie drone. I haven't got the flying one yet, but this introduces a wheelie drone and things that that can do in your mission. And then once you get that, you then have to go and get the car, the cyber driver car, which is this talking smart car. And then you have to go and steal that and then drive that back to a garage. And the entire mission is just so much fun you just have a big smile on your face um it teaches you all of the mechanics of the game everything you need to know about that game is really kind of encapsulated in that first mission and it's just absolutely fantastic and i was really after that i was like yep 
this game has hooked me. I'm happy to spend a lot of my gaming holiday, gaming time playing this. And it's absolutely superb. So, so when it comes to... Because it's obviously an open world game, and open world games are usually jam-packed with side quests and little mini-missions and the, the, the repeatable stuff that you find dotted all over Cross with your legends on the map. How, how do yeah. they fare like compared to an Assassin's Creed or a GTA? Are they stuff that you go out your way to find, or are you just you concentrating on the main missions because it just doesn't tickle your fancy? No, uh, they are there, but at the moment I'm being very blinkered because what happens with me, and I think I've said a time and time on the pod, is sometimes I get overwhelmed with those games where you'll have the first two kind of opening missions and you'll go, this is great, go from here to there, and then suddenly the map goes pop, 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 and there's just all of these side missions. Yeah. I think that it happened with The Witcher. I think, I, you know, Darren kind of helped me with The Witcher, you know, it helped with it. And then suddenly there's so much and I get overwhelmed by it. So there are lots of missions, and every now and then it says oh there's some you know P- pvp uh, around your area do you want to do that and i've been going nope i don't know <laughs> you know i'm not interested i'm just so there's there's some online stuff is jumping trying to jump into my game but i'm just ignoring it at the moment because i just want to get kind of used to the mechanics used to the whole control system but yeah there's lots of so suddenly you have your dead sec that's the group you're with you have an app on your phone and and your phone will vibrate and it just says in the bottom left hand corner there's a new dead sec mission and you're like okay fine i'll ignore that <laughs> you know then they just start stacking up but you can get to them at any point so I, what i'm trying to do i've got one more kind of story mission which will get me to like a nice kind of high level i'm probably be about level 10 and at that point i thought right i'll stop at that point and then i'll do some side missions and then try and do some um research and try and get because i want to get the drone the flying drone i want to get that so there's some things that i need to do in order to do that i think my problem is when I do ignore side missions, and it's happened with Skyrim, this happened with Fable, this happens with a lot of games where I, if when I get to the end, it's a bit of a struggle for me because I haven't done that time with the side missions. So for, I don't want to repeat that mistake again with for, with Watch Dogs. So I'm going to stop at a logical point in the story and then do some side missions. But they are kind of popping up all the time, and your your app and your phone just keeps rumbling every now and then. Cool. Yeah, I always, I always find it trouble with, with the open world ones, because occasionally you can find a few that you like, and you don't... I, I almost find like I want to save those ones until I can just like spread them out so I don't mm. exhaust them and have to resort just to the, here's a taxi mission or something like that, but... Yes. But no, it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. Like I say, every now and then, you because when you're in a car or, or a, a bike, you have like, you can get some tunes playing and every now and then when you walk past somebody it just says oh you can you have this app on your phone where you can steal people's songs that they're listening to so you just steal those songs and then you can then add those to a playlist it's a really it's such a cool um little kind of mechanism that they have going on in the game that i'm really enjoying and it really has just kind of grabbed me for and and each of the each of the missions that I've done so far, each one of them has their own way that you can do it. You can go in all guns blazing if you want, or you can do as I've been doing, kind of trying to go in very stealthily, taking a lot of guys out slowly, or even actually trying to get around everything without actually touching anyone, without kind of taking anyone out. Just do it stealthily, get in, get out, and and so I've there's there's the mission that I'm where i finished last night um i tried it three those three different ways and it was it was really interesting because one point it all went south so i was i was found and then they started shooting at me so i started shooting back and then it just i was like no this isn't how this game's supposed to be played and then so i I kind of just stood there and died and then i thought right okay i'll do it again and this time i'll do this 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 and this and this and i was just really enjoying that just kind of working out kind of i guess a bit like hitman so so that's kind of that so Forza Horizon I'm absolutely loving Forza Horizon Blizzard Mountain there is so much in Blizzard Mountain um, as, a, as a DLC it's kind of well worth the buck and then the last thing before we move on to our kind of game of the year which is the, the reason why we're here uh, the re- before I move on I played Jackbox uh, Jackbox Party Pack um, on it might have been either Christmas night or it could have been Boxing Day um, the family were all there um, we, we decided to fire up Jackbox Party Pack and I was I was just really impressed and I thought I'd just put it here because I was really impressed that um, and I'm sure Darren's mentioned it previously on, on the other pods but I was impressed that we were all just sitting there so there was six of us um, sitting around it might have been Christmas day actually so we were all just sitting around and um, and we all just kind of got out we all had iPhones or iPads in front of our faces anyway so we all just used that to play Jackbox Party Pack and it was just so it just 
the the way that it worked the mechanic for this which is you just go to a website you put in the room code and then you're there and then off you go and then we kind of went through all of the games in the very first uh, jackbox party back and it was just really good fun we all had such a giggle so I, I, I love the Jackbox stuff because it seems to be the future of peripherals. I think in the same way like SingStar has moved to using your phone. The fact that you can just use your tablet devices and it can be any old website. I'm sure you could actually just use like a touchscreen PC if you really wanted to at some point. But yes. I, I just love the fact it just opens up to everyone in the room because you can get like eight, eight or more players on some of them, can't you? There 99, really I think, on one. one wow. Yeah, wow. it's like infinite people that can join in and... Uh, the good, the brilliant thing about that is everybody's used to their own phone. They don't yeah. have to get used to it. Your pad, it's like no. nah, yeah. No, what's the button to do this? Ah. Yeah. I think the one way you have to draw something and then people have to guess what it is. <laughs> I, I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. Is that drawful? Someone... Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. That would just made me laugh so much. So it was just it was some of the stuff that kind of like Will or Nicola were drawing was drawing. It was just really made us giggle and it was just it was just so much fun we were all just kind of like crying with laughter throughout <laughs> so it was just so much fun i really enjoyed it and it just was like you know next time kind of have people around that's definitely something that i'm going to bring out again because it really did just kind of hit the spot and i think i think i might have uh, spoken to you james like was that kind of seen it one of the games yeah. i absolutely love is seen it i love seeing it i have all those paddles and all of that but seeing it using this mechanism would be absolutely perfect and it would just work so well yeah you you almost hope that now they've got going they could almost license out the or, t- or take on the license to do other quiz shows like this because mm. like how they tried i'm sure they tried like actually i've got loads of nes cards that are jeopardy and they tried 100 to 1 wasn't it on the xbox 360 and just like uh, yes. it just it just seems perfectly suited to have a little quiz button then you can answer yourselves without having to worry about showing the controller or passing the pad to anyone else and off you go mm. yeah Absolutely, I mean, like Trivial Pursuits, all of those kind of games would just be, it would just be so much fun. I mean, I really did enjoy it. There was lots of kind of time, like, just kind of typing it in. And, and every, but like, as you said, Darren, you know, everybody's used to their control. So you don't have to spend ages kind of going, oh, you need to press this or press that. You know, you just say, go into there and then just look at that screen and that screen. And it was just, and we all just had such a crack with it. It was just so much fun. It was really cool. Cool. Great guess. Yeah, it really is. So, I mean, has, have either of you guys played the others? Because I think there's about two or three now, isn't there? There's like, I think I've played bits and pieces from the second pack, but I honestly what? can't remember which is from what. Because I think I played Drawful, which mm-hmm. is like bizarre Pictionary, isn't it? They ask you to draw like a bag full of cats or something yes. like that in yes. one colour on a touchscreen with your finger. So good luck with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then there's other ones where you have to add almost like uh, the punchlines, isn't it, to jokes, which I am terrible at. But there's just so many different varieties. There is the quiz version as well, or uh, I think it's almost like a truth or dare type thing. They've Mm. just got eight or nine, and they just seem to be nice variety. So if you don't find one you like, there's usually some to suit, if not you, but the crowd you're with. So they, they seem to be going for a nice widespread. Absolutely. I mean, that's what we did. I think it was Boxing Day night, I think, that we did it. It was like Boxing Day. We just went through. I think we had like two games on each one. Um, and then everyone was just like, yeah, this is great fun. You know, it was really good. We just really had a, a, a good laugh. So it was, it was very cool. So I'm going to, I'm going to check the others out because, uh, we, we really liked it. Yeah. So one, one we had fun with as well. The drawful one was a real favorite. The other one was everybody picks, everybody picks a word, I think, to sort of finish a sentence or something like that. And then, Everybody picks a word to fit the gap of this sentence, and uh, only one of them is correct. Uh, and then everybody has to guess which is the correct one. And so, mm. every, uh, it's something. It might be fibbage. I can't remember, but yes. um, it was really funny anyway. And some of some of the things that people were writing just <laughs> a little bit like sort of cards against humanity sort of thing. It was just very funny. Yes, no, absolutely. I think you're right. I think there was fibbage where they have a, you know, kind of they have a question. There is an answer there. Then everybody kind of puts their answer down, and, and it was, yeah, it was just. And you so sort of get fun. faked out, but if you get faked out, it costs you some points. But if you get yes. in person, yeah, it's good. It's good, good fun. There was always some like some ones that really kind of made a chuckle. So you would vote for them, and you get extra points if you got a vote. Yeah, and it was it was just really cool. I was just like say so those those all of them. There wasn't there wasn't a dull game in there, so they was all good fun. 
So, that's what we've been playing. Right now, it's on for the, the, the good stuff. It's the game of the year. Um, so, it's, uh, so what we thought we'd do is we'd go through our kind of game of year. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to attack the list in. We'll have high points of 2016. We'll have the low points of 2016. Probably already spoke about those. Um, then we would have a look at the, um, missed op- no, the missed opportunity. And then we would go reverse through game of the year. So, each of us have all got kind of three games that we wanted to kind of put in to the game of the year resulting in what each of us think is the kind of game of the year i don't think we'll try and do an ultimate one um the fisticuffs for that so um <laughs> so so shall we start with uh darren let's start with your high point so what was your high point last year okay my high point of 2016 i think has to be getting my vibe um there's nothing i don't think that no tech device probably that i've ever bought that's given me such an amazed just just amazed me so much and given me so much immersion and really made me think that I was stepping into something new and wonderful and you know the hype the the announcement of it coming out and the fact that you could walk around which before that I'd never heard of it was just oculus all the way and then the wait and then the delays um, but then the actual getting it and then after the setup just donning the headset and being in VR because I'd only tried it about once or twice on oculus before that I'd never tried a vibe um and actually being in there and looking all the way around me um, at, at this at this virtual world, it was, it, it was amazing. So a few of my standout experiences on the Vive, um, piloting my ship in Elite Dangerous and realising I could look out of the windows all around me in space, flying through the ice and rocks that form a planet's rings, uh, infiltrating enemy strongholds in uh, unseen diplomacy and crawling along the floor to do that, <laughs> um, taking on baddies in numerous wave shooters, be it... Be it aliens or who knows what um actually walking around the world of minecraft that i've known so well um seeing one-to-one scale of the millennium falcon as it flew in and using a lightsaber in trials on tatooine uh kicking ass like legolas in bow and arrow games standing out on a plank 100 meters up in the air from a skyscraper in rich's plank experience of flying around the city that city in santa's sleigh delivering presents in the same game was awesome at christmas um watching saturday night live in vr and being sat with with the likes of Larry David and Tom Hanks in the audience and being able to see them um, was amazing. You could do that on pretty much any... I think you could do that on Gear VR as well. Going around the VR Museum of Fine Art and looking at um, Michelangelo's David and stuff like that with no crowds and getting right up to the Mona Lisa and things like that was, was amazing. Um, being scared to death by zombies in the Brookhaven experiment and scaring other people to death when they were playing the, the Brookhaven experiment by touching them on the shoulder when they're being attacked was quite funny. Flying around the world and exploring in Google v, uh, Google Earth VR was good. Meeting Glados in the lab and just uh, so much more that I can't even remember. Um, but the thing about it has been that not only have those experiences been sublime, um watching friends and family experience all of that as well has been just as good as experiencing mm. it myself so yeah that i don't think uh, with that one that wasn't a hard decision for me you know definitely my vibe yeah. I, I think the um, amount of times i've heard you talk about it leading up to that that moment where it actually arrived i don't think this is a surprise at all there, there's been a glee <laughs> in your voice every time it's been mentioned which is quite charming yeah i mean i don't i don't mention it i don't think or me being on it every week, you know, I've usually done something new, but I don't always mention it because I don't want it to sort of get a bit, I don't want to saturate the pod with it all. Um, but it was a present for my 40th birthday and I waited a year extra for it because there was nothing out. I banked my 40th present and I couldn't have asked for a better one, you know, something different, something great, you know, that is kind of something that I wouldn't buy unless it was for a big occasion. And I I just think it's a great thing that to, to have had that because it came along at the perfect time for me. Well, a year earlier would have been better but yeah <laughs> it's it's really good so i'm i'm really impressed i mean i think for me um the kind of high point is very similar to yours where my high point is um trying playstation vr for the very first time at Eurogamer. So at EGX, um, as I kind of spoke on the pod, Will and I had a PlayStation. We had a, an invite to go to PlayStation and try a VR. And then so I think Will was playing Robinson and I got to play Batman. After a while, I was like, 
at first when I went in, I was like, I don't want, I want anything but Batman. And then I sat down, I was like, no, 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 I want Batman. I want, I want, I want to do Batman. <laughs> so I managed to kind of get Batman. And then the first time I kind of stuck that on, very similar to what you were saying, Darren, I think the first time I kind of stuck that on and I looked around and suddenly I was on the rooftop of Gotham and, and I just, it was just everywhere. And I got to play this and I got to suit up as Batman. For me, I was just like, yeah, this is, this is something special. The first time I lowered into the back cave and lowered into the back cave and I felt like I was moving down into the back cave. I was like, I cannot wait to get this home. I cannot wait to kind of do this and play this game whenever I whenever I want. And that was kind of the one thing. I think trying trying PlayStation VR or trying just VR really for properly for the first time. Because you and I had done that the year before at EGX where I got to play that kind of third per- person game on um on uh, Oculus and it just that wasn't that wasn't a really good uh, first impression no, of, it was a of shame VR. that wasn't it yeah that was a shame because that was a bad impression if anything yeah it didn't, indeed didn't sell it so suddenly putting on this lightweight um because before that kind of that Oculus it was very heavy front heavy so suddenly putting on this lightweight um PlayStation VR and then being transported to Gotham for me that was just like that was just a high point I was like yeah this is this is a changing point in games this is this is this is a high point this is something brand new which I think is something that you've been saying um for a good 18 months now that this is something new and it's the first time we've had something new like this in this wonderful hobby that is gaming and and for me I just I came off of that and I was just very excited I mean James you saw kind of how excited I was when I kind of came off it I think it, for that. it was it was again charming it was just <laughs> you were like a small child again at that point just like you'd been let loose in the candy store and you got to be Batman <laughs> my I couldn't goodness. get my words out quick enough I was like <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, th- I think I'm going to be bucking the VR trend uh, on this one my- although uh, I've enjoyed VR I still think my eyes are broken because I don't quite have the same magical experience as you guys but um, mm. my biggest high point is is almost me trying to shoehorn a game in that I really want to give props for because <laughs> the uh, judging committee ruled that this wasn't a 2016 game um, <laughs> so my highest point uh, was actually Life is Strange um, we after we finished recording the pod just before Christmas, Anthony and I both tried to figure out when we had played Life is Strange. Which year did it fall in? And we both realised we finished it 365 days ago to the day we were recording this. We finished it on the 3rd of January, so... Yes, But wow. I, can, I can just remember that I played the first chapter and thought, OK, this is good. Second chapter, the next day, I go, oh no, this is good. And that next, the very evening, I played the next one. And then I played the last two chapters pretty much back to back or so. It just captivated me. Um, there was something that it did, I think, in terms of the storyline. There was a personability about the characters that really got me. Mm. Um, and it was the fact that you could actually try and rewind time. So you didn't feel like you were truly committing to a decision and so you could see both aspects and it made it gave you these sort of shades of gray everything that you did was not right or wrong it was just how you were shaping the characters you were interacting with and it just left such an impact on me i know we're at the start of last year we were begging you to play it darren just just to try and get yeah. through it and anthony had this mass anthony and i had this massive spoiler chat on on twitter behind the scenes just to try and go oh my god did you see this what did you do no i did this i i can barely remember a narrative game that I have just loved so much from beginning to end. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If it wasn't for VR, um, at my high point, because you know the, the high point of games that I played, Life is Strange. Oh man, what a game! What a fantastic game! I absolutely yeah. loved it. Captivated, enraptured. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> game. Absolutely beautiful game. One of the best games I've ever played. I love it. I'm so glad that you guys got me to play it and I know I missed the boat I was a good few months after you guys but my goodness me once I started playing it seriously talk about hook line and sinker yeah. it's just and the way it got into my head thinking about it all the time the different routes you could take and it captured so much I think I've said this before the the fragility and the vulnerability of, of being that age and I'd sort of forgotten what it was like to be that age and things and the pressures and the social pressures and things like that, and I don't know when with the soundtrack as well, it just cap- yeah. seems to encapsulate it perfectly, and it took me there. It took me there. I loved it. Absolutely, I loved it. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
I, I wish think... I could forget it so I could play it again. <laughs> yeah. I think kind of very in very similar to kind of Telltale games. I love the fact that when you got to the end of a chapter, it did say you know, oh, you went this way. Um, the other people that have played it have gone this way, and at that point, I think James, it was just you and I playing it, wasn't it? Yes. So it was very yeah. kind of like fifty percent, and that was it. And it was really interesting to kind of see. It was like at the end of it, go right, okay, what did James do? Oh, I can't believe he did that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, into the point where you know the three of us have spoken about it where we got to the end and 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 you know even that you know we've we've kind of uh, we have gone different ways so obviously not all three of us have gone different ways but the you know we have gone different ways towards the end so we've we've all kind of left very different um games uh, at the end point and this yeah. is just a, such a fantastic game i'm glad that you found a way um to shoehorn it in because if you haven't played life is strange i think it's definitely one of those games where you really should play it yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it benefits very much so that the fact all the episodes are out too because mm. yeah i wonder if it would have had the impact if we'd have had to wait you know a month or so in between episodes because there's there is that problem i think as, as you guys were both saying you've got different games you're playing at the time so at, at this point in time so you are distracted from other big titles mm. so if you know if if the final chapter came in one of my rocket league or in one of my hitman phases i i wonder whether i'd have been pulled back to it whether those couple of months off would have softened the impact of the the cliffhangers it gave me so this is very much i'm, I'm so glad i waited till after all five episodes were there so i could chew through it like a box set hmm. yeah absolutely absolutely I've, it's my it's my desktop wallpaper oh wow. cool bought the soundtrack um, I went on YouTube looking at different because there's there's fan made videos where they've sort of made different endings out of the end with the, you know with using the music and everything. There's there's some quite beautiful ones because I was just, I was just so sort of in there when I finished it. I just sort of living and breathing it. So I was just on YouTube looking at it because I loved the music and I didn't have the music at the time. I just wanted to hear like Max and Chloe's theme. And um, there was a few like let's plays of people. I think one of them was like it's like watch this. It's the uh, Life is Strange, the end, and, and like, obviously I couldn't watch it until I played it, and I watched this girl playing it, and she was playing the end, and we all know the bits I'm talking about, and the tears were just coming, <laughs> just oh. flooding out of her eyes, and, it, and I was like, oh, I feel for you. <laughs> She's like, that's, I can't even say, she was just like, what? <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness me, and that brought it back, so I could kind of live it again through someone else's eyes watching that clip, and it, it haunted me for weeks, and talking about it even now it sort of gives me goosebumps magical game hmm Absolutely, I do think there were a couple of times in the game where my eyes were broken, and uh, and I just because it really did kind of well me up. I think there were a couple of times where I'm just like, this was just there was there were some moments. You know, never before as a game um, made me put down a controller because I need to think about the answer to a question, and mm. and that you know, in all of the Telltale games I've ever played, I've never I've never paused and think, oh, what do I need to do? It's always been like, yeah, I'm kind of there. I'll do this, do this. But there, there's a couple of points in life is strange where i had to pause the game and seriously kind of sit back put the controller down and sit back on the sofa to try and think what should i do and and they're just amazing and yeah no it's absolutely fantastic game so that is uh, that's the high point it's good to start on a high one um so low points now um mine is the last guardian but the biggest disappointment uh, for me last year is the last guardian the fact that i played it put it back into that boomerang box and kind of uh, mailed it off um was was very kind of telling but we've already spoken about that so that's kind I, of I just want, i just want to cover is it the weight of expectation do you reckon like no. would it have been as disappointing if it was just a game is it just the 10 years of hype, or did you have such... you just wanting it to be Shadow of the Colossus? No, because, I mean, I've played, um, I've played Ico, and I've played Shadow of the Colossus. I've never finished Shadow of the Colossus, but I've played both of those games. And I've played the remastered as well, kind of had a, a dabble around, kind of a weekend when they came out. Um, it wasn't the fact of that. I just was... This is a game, it looked amazing. I was couldn't wait to play it and then when i started to play it as you know as i've said you know, it's just the frustration against the enjoyment was yeah. just i just yeah. couldn't i just could not invest any more time when i have amazing games right now such as hitman when i have uh, forza where i have um, Watch Dogs 2 and all of these great games that i really want to play the last guardian is not is something i just i don't want to hang on to you know i've got dead rising 4 which is i've never played a dead rising game but i'd rather go and play that than play the last guardian so it's just 
it was just the fact that when I started to play it, and I was playing it, like I said, I said you know, when I was playing it with, with, with Ed, that we started to play it, and then suddenly we were just like, this, this is just dumb. Why are we wasting our time on this game? You know, and that, that, that's kind of, I've never had that before with a game. I've never really, I've always gone, oh yeah, well, let's just continue going. We'll, we'll work it out type thing. But this was one where I'm just like, I cannot play this game because everything about it just is, just feels wrong for me. And it was just the clunky controls, the bad camera, the, strange movement of this big animal you know and you know i've i've moved a dragon esh around in fours in uh in a viva pinata so i know how to <laughs> handle a ginormous character uh but this just was clumsy and horrible and 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 it just never clicked for me so so for me it was just i was i did want it to be good i you know, we've seen this when when last E three where they said it's coming out, they were, we were very excited. You know, it's like I can't believe we're actually going to get this game, and 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 like I say, it was excited when it started, when the game started, and it was like press start. I was like, wow, there was there was a bit that was kind of like oh, I'm very excited about this, but then straight away it was just like bosh, it was like a cliff. You know, you just hit that wall, and it just it was horrible, and it was the fact that there this game is 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 not a good game, and and it's not like I've wasted my life one this game or anything like that it was just a this was going to this looked amazing the premise was amazing but actually when you get your hands on the control of this game it's horrible and and that in you know in my opinion it's horrible and that for that for me i was just like that is just you know and as i said earlier very candidly you know i played no man's sky and to have this is a bigger disappointment than no man's sky yeah just, kind of just says everything i think yeah, it's almost it's almost good that Last Guardian came along in some respects, then, because I think we'd have had a hat trick of No Man's Skies. Because <laughs> yeah. both so Darren and Guardian. myself have got the biggest disappointment being No Man's Sky. Yes, um, and I, I think it's it's in very similar ways to The Last Guardian because I had expectations, I had hopes of what No Man's Sky could be, and I think probably more so than The Last Guardian, they promised so much. The, you know the infinite universe wasn't even I, it wasn't even the variety for me it, it wasn't just the sheer scope of what they were doing that i i love what they could be doing technically i love the idea of going from planet to planet roaming and looking at the species and making a difference making an impact mm. in the world and i can remember the creeping realization of this wasn't what was promised this isn't what i was expecting and i think i pushed on for a good 10 hours hoping that I'd feel differently at the next planet, at the next system something would change but I have I have, I think because I tried so hard, I have very rarely been so angry with the game for mm. not being what I wanted it to be and it's, it's very harsh to say because I've been on both sides, you know, I've been the punter and I've been the person reading the forums at what I've helped create and so I feel I feel really happy that those guys finally got something out that was so big so impressive so so expansive with such a small team but equally i feel really ripped off that i was sold a 50 quid early access game that has no depth to it whatsoever no absolutely i mean you know you talk about astroneer is it astroneer yes um you talk about astroneer that's kind of that price point is where kind of no man's sky should have come in shouldn't it It should have been a early access game yep you know pay 10 15 pounds to kind of play yeah. and while yeah. while we improve it we were sold a dream um, yeah with with few words we were we were sold the dream on a few what's been revealed to be orchestrated somewhere were orchestrated um videos or gameplay um, sessions at E3 and things like that and what they showed sold something that obviously by the reaction that millions of gamers have yearned for for years this was something amazing it was coming to console as well which is amazing um, and the reality as as we started to discover through Let's Plays and reviews and what have you and, and just opinion and word of mouth was just nowhere near it, the amount of missing features. I felt so let down. So let down and disappointed. I remember saying talking mm. to you, Anthony, on the day on the on the release day and it, you were like, what, what are you doing, man? And I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. And I was saying, I, I, it's released. I should be playing No Man's Sky, but I'm giving it a wide berth because I don't trust it. And I should be playing it, and I'm so disappointed because I was actually, that's the game I was most excited for. Not just this year. We were talking... We sort of talked... When we launched the podcast, I think it wasn't long 
that we were talking about No Man's Sky. Um, maybe maybe right at the start, maybe I can't remember if it was already a thing, but if it wasn't already a thing, it became a thing very quickly into us starting the podcast. And we were excited through 2015, and we were talked about it, and we used to get so enthusiastic with our expectation. And I don't think it was an unrealistic expectation that we had, really, from what we'd been shown. We didn't, like, go off into flights of fancy. We based our expectation on what we'd been shown and the things that had been told, you know, thing, official things that had been said. And then... I got so I was, just, I was more excited because I, I sort of dwindled with Last Guardian. I wasn't as hyped for Last Guardian in the last couple of years. You know, even when they said it was coming out, it's like okay, I'm excited about that. But No Man's Sky felt like something big. It felt like something amazing, and unlike the Last Guardian, that's kind of a product of its time coming out now. You know, so it's an old game really. This was something new and something that I felt. Oh, this is the game I've always wanted. This is a, this is elite, but better and collaboration and trading and infinite universe and all this I wasn't expecting a palette swap when you go to a different planet um, and yeah, biggest disappointment ever, I wasn't happy it's just like you say about Last Guardian, I wanted to love it, I wanted to buy it, I wanted to love it I thought it was the game I'd be playing forever You know, I think everybody did, it's just like you get this, you won't need anything else and the reality was just so disappointing Such a, so I felt winded <laughs> it kicked in the guts man with it and it's just like, ah. Oh. I, I wanted it, and I was sad that day. I was sad yeah. on release day, and all I was getting—I mean, the, the massive backlash was terrible as well, you know. But regardless of that, it was just kind of as, as the realization sank in that unfortunately I was—I was right to swerve it. Um, it it's the main that? reason why I've, I haven't bought Last Guardian because it's, it's made me go, "No, I'm." That was the wake-up call. Like, mm. wait, listen to yeah. not only reviews but friends opinions who you trust mm-hmm. mm. yeah but that's, I think it, that's exactly what i was going to ask i was going to say do you think it's changed your opinion on kind of jumping into games yeah, that you aren't quite, quite sure of you know it's just mm. it really has because like you say i mean i bought i bought this digitally so i couldn't even i couldn't even take it back uh, i couldn't trade it in because it's i've I bought it digitally and you know paid the paid the full price for it which is now i mean you look on playstation network now this is now 21 pounds which is probably the price it should have been when it launched but the thing the thing that always surprises me the thing that i never hear kind of people talk about is is sony in this now this is a sony game this is a sony exclusive at the moment i know it's on pc and i know you can get it if you're playing it on windows but sony were hyping this game in a big way but yet Everyone is talking about Hello Games rather than just Sony. It's like Sony almost get a free pass for selling us this this dud, you know. Because I'm, you know, just that Last Guardian kind of was a little bit more. Otherwise, you're, you know, you're right, uh, James. We would have had the hat trick. But you know, Sony sold us this. That they had it as the the keynote for the PlayStation Experience, the keynote for E3, and that's kind of when Darren, when you and I first saw it, which was that mm. e, that very first E3, and and so they were they were trumpeting this, but then suddenly they've gone quiet as well as Hello Games. Have gone it's, it's not I mean, even quite they've they actually threw hello games under the bus at one point as well going yeah, yeah, oh yeah, they I should have hired that. a pr firm or something like that to, to manage the message and it's yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, so actually a lot of my my exasperation is actually at sony because of how much they pushed it and how much they charged for it mm. because if they were publishing it that's they were the ones that were putting that price tag on it they and managed the expectation it a bit with that price there's there's a perception yeah. of value there yeah. and an expectation driven by the the forty nine ninety nine price or was it or was it fifty four ninety nine. I think it was fifty four. I think I paid been... about fifty four. Now, yeah. if Sony would have done, you know, when they when they delayed it, they said like, like um, No Man's Sky is coming out in five or five weeks time, and we're dropping the price to twenty five pounds. I I think the same people that picked it up on day one would have still picked it up. I don't think it would have. I don't think anyone would have gone. Oh, I'm not going to touch that now because you dropped it. I think it would. That would have helped. It may even have sold even more. I mean, it's quite interesting that Steam released their top 100 games of this year, and and No Man's Sky is just so high in that list. You know, it's in the top. I think it's the top 15. It's it's there. It's in. The, it may even be the top 10 of 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 their top games. So it's just like, and I think all of that is around that launch i think all of those uh, copies of no man's sky were probably bought either pre-ordered or or on on day one before those yeah. uh, reviews dropped yeah and this is the thing i was because i was going to say the whole sort of debacle was a lesson a very publicly played out lesson 
of the wrong type of marketing to the gaming community and from the gamer side a lesson in taking that marketing with a pinch of salt and this doesn't this isn't good for either side um when you want to really foster tr- trust and harmony i know i know it's business but you want to be loyal to your fans and the fans want to trust the people that are selling them the games that they love and so i was going to say it's a very publicly played out lesson that people should learn from but the problem is like you just said the companies aren't really going to learn a lesson because they've still got their millions. It doesn't matter that the Steam play rates dropped off a cliff from, like, you know, on the first day breaking all records of, of um, players at the same time to sort of the the biggest dip in Steam history by, like, 80% in, in, in a few weeks. 80% lower, so there's only 20% of that gamer base still playing it, and it's probably touching zero now. Does that actually matter... If they've still made, because all that, all that matters is copies sold. Mm. I, I think but it will matter it, it, when it comes back to the next if, round. Yeah, if games are more the, prudent. Yeah, I, I, even I don't know if there's a comparison to Hollywood, where you know absolute stinkers of films, they occasionally get sequels. But I think a lot of it can be off the buzz that they actually generate. Because although I think Transformers is a horrendous, <laughs> I don't know, assassination of my childhood favourites, it seems to keep selling because people keep going back. Yeah. Whereas I'm guessing something like The Suicide Squad, although it took reasonable numbers, was so panned by everyone, apart from Anthony, um, that they probably won't be carrying on with that series. They'll be switching up and, you know, they are doing like the the, the ladies of the DC universe uh, get together rather than carrying on with Suicide Squad. So I think it does have repercussions. But let's... I do, I do want to end on at least a positive, you know, because it is an impressive feat for a team of 15 to yes. put that out. And I feel so sorry for them, the amount of crap that got thrown their way. Because as we say, it was as much Sony's faults as theirs. And they've been working diligently and long to try and right this ship. And I know they've still got a lot of work to do, but they are putting in the hours and they're putting out the patches. So yeah, it's commendable. But what did you think about the sort of radio silence after being so after being so vocal in the run up? Oh, I was trying to get us off on a positive note, Darren. I'm sorry, mate. I, I was, just, try, I, I was trying to question. swing it all around. I've <laughs> got to ask the question though. What did you think about that? I thought it was awful. Yeah, I can understand I, I, why they went silent in the sense they just at times saying something might be considered saying you know, making it worse. Because there's nothing that the the people out there, the particularly rabid people on the the forums, on the on the on the Twitter, just like contacting Sean Murray, there's nothing that I think Sean could have said to make them feel better. So I can see why silence was possibly the best option. Yeah, but there was I think because there wasn't evenly a carefully worded statement on their website for months. I mean, this yeah. thing went quiet for three months, apart mm-hmm. from when someone hacked their account and they were forced to come out. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think they were in a no-win situation in some respects. Yeah. And you know what? It doesn't have to finish on a high note. It's the biggest disappointment of 2016. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Right. So let's get on. So now what we're going to do, before we jump into what our top three games are each, finishing with our ultimate kind of game of the year, um, we'll just give out an honourable mention. It's the one that didn't quite make the list, but we still kind of wanted to mention it. We still wanted to give it kind of that pat on the back. Um, so, Darren, um, what's your what's your honourable mention for 2016? My honourable mention is Hyper White Drifter which I played on PC. Uh, absolutely awesome game. And to just I talked about it at the time. Um, but just to furnish people's memories with a little bit of uh, what this game is about, I thought I'd read uh, one of the most helpful Steam reviews that describes it. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> so, oh, he's clearing his throat. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> no. Imagine Zelda, Prepare to Die Edition. In a way, it's like Zelda crossed with Bloodborne or a much, much better Xenonia. This has everything I've ever wanted in a 2D action-adventure game. Great mechanics, subtle story, fast pace, nice skills, and insane mobility. If it looks like something you might enjoy, chances are it will go well beyond your expectations. Um, And I just think that sums it up really, really well. It's a beautiful-looking, top-down, pixel indie game um, in sort of the mould of 16-bit adventure era flick screen adventure era and i loved it at the time um it's just stunning to look at a 
joy to play, a great adventure in there. And the good thing about it is there's no real hand-holding in there. You just appear in this very strange world. A bit, it, it reminded me a little bit of when I first played Another World back in the day. Um, I said it's, it's from top down instead of side on. And there's this world that is completely alien to you. And within this world, you start to work out its systems, work out what pieces of its language means, work out how its computer terminals are shops and the aliens, um, what what they're talking about and things like that. And you you get transported there. I like that. I think you probably noticed a trend with me. I like getting transported to a, to another world within a game. Um, and, of course, the world's all ravaged and what have you, and, and, and you're the one that's going to put things to rights. And it's a joy to play really tight controls and a real a real challenge but at the same time it's not one of these games that's going to take you you know hours and hours and hours this one i think it took me about 14 hours to do and there was more for me to do in that in there as well there was there was side stuff to do as well like more exploration but it was a great fully rounded experience and it was it was brilliant because at, at the start i felt such a fish out of water and just through determination and the the pull of the game the lore of the game and the enjoyment of of the controls and the determination to get from a to b and, and oh i wonder how i'm going to do that oh oh that's how you do it and then by the midpoint or maybe the quarter point you realize that you've got you that you're familiar with this world and that just keeps sort of way layering onto you and by the end of it you're sort of this powerful master with all this magic that you can summon that you've worked out it feels like you've worked it all out yourself as if you've actually struggled to learn the, the arcane practices of which you're wielding. And it's just a very beautiful game. So that's me. High Polite Drifter is my honourable mention cool. for 2016. I did actually dabble with this probably for a, probably only for an hour or so because it was one of these I kick-started and completely forgot about. Um, <laughs> but I was really impressed with how it, it, how it animated as much as anything. There was such a slickness to everything that you did and the, even just the detail in the world was, was beautiful in the sense that it didn't rely on text it's had lots of pictograms or just um i guess murals of just trying to put over a story without having to resort to, to actual pure language yeah and the, the, the world sort of felt like it had a history as well yeah. because of all those murals and things and i forgot to mention the music that that sort of punctuated the mood of, throughout the the adventure um just the music was stunning as well and all together as a package it's just brilliant and again you know at the price it is, it's, it's probably about, I don't know how much it is now. Um, I should probably have a look. But, um, you know, it's not, it's not an expensive game, £12 or something like that, you know. And it's just so much fun for, for, for that kind of cash, you know. You can't op- often get such quality. Well, I suppose actually there's loads of games, if you know where to look for, that, that are reasonably priced and a lot of fun. But, yeah, it's really, really worth a look. Fantastic. Awesome. I remember kind of when you finished the game because you were you were Twitch streaming it, weren't you? When you finished, oh, yeah. <laughs> finished the game, that was just so much fun to kind of see because I think you you kind of got into a bit of a bug um, the first time you tried to finish it, and then you contacted the devs who then updated it, and then you managed to kind of finish it. And I watched both of those streams, and it was just like it was so much fun just watching you kind of finish that game. That's right. Yeah, I, I triggered a bug, and I got in touch with the dev because I was really annoyed because that boss had took me so long. It was another one of these that Sam was like sat by me going come on daddy <laughs> so I'll do it I'll do it Sam I'll do it um, and I did it and yeah I was I was twitching when I did it for the first time and it went into this bug where I just ended up just, just jump, going in a permanent loop I was like no because <laughs> it meant I had to do it again <laughs> it was so hard so I got in touch with the dev and the dev was like oh yeah but you're on the he goes are you on the beta he goes just change it out of the beta and you'll be fine yeah, and I did that, and I was okay. And I thought, ah, I shouldn't have been in the beta, but I think I was in the beta for another reason, just just to test it, probably. But yeah, he was he was a, he was a really nice guy. Um, it's fourteen ninety nine at the moment on Steam. I'm not sure if it's out on the consoles. It is indeed. It's fifteen it is, pounds yeah. on the PlayStation Network, and I think a similar price on Xbox One. Oh, oh, brilliant. well, I'm just glad it's on all formats because that means it can be enjoyed by more people. But a lovely crafted game and a great fun experience. Fantastic. James, your um, honourable mention. Yep, my honourable mention is Forza Horizon 3. Mm. Um, Primarily the multiplayer aspect, because I'm not usually a racing game fan. I think I the last games I used to get really into, I think it was the Colin McRae series and when it turned to dirt, because... I usually get really bored going round and round in circles trying to learn the curves and take the right racing lines, whereas at least rally, you're, you're driving by the seat of your pants and, you know, every tree that you hit is a new tree. Um, <laughs> so 
playing Forza Horizon 3 online with three or four friends where you're just basically just herring across the countryside of Australia um, was superb fun. You just, you know, set up races through towns or maybe you go cross country trying to get to, like, forgoing all roads completely just herring through forests over fields trying to avoid trees weave through and you'd you'd see your friend dot on the minimap just stop and you'd hear this cry of pain as they realized they'd wedged themselves in a tree didn't you anthony and then we'd carry on (laughs) and it's it just brought so many of the most fun multiplayer gaming moments that i've had because at times despite being this really polished really high-end racing game could just be so silly i it's it's just what we made of it you know we'd spend hours trying to get that high speed high score on a on a uh, runway we'd yes. all go off and tune our cars or then one of us would go and cheat and buy one from an auction so we'd all have to save up our money and go and get the same car to make sure we had a, a similar playing field it was just something i returned to time and time again just wanting someone else to be online again i'm sorry for buying that car <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, absolutely it was you know there, that that was i think we spent about like an hour to 90 minutes just yeah. trying to get that that flat line speed but time um, flew by um, didn't it because it was it really we were just hanging out and then more people came in and they were doing it as well they were getting sucked into our strange leaderboard struggle that we were having and it was just it was absolutely super fun they were spending spending 20 minutes with us all trying to j- jump and trying to get to a high board a high xp board and just seeing people flying over you in different cars it was just oh, it was just so much fun yeah, because I don't think we had a. I don't think you came on too often, did you, Darren? With that one, but you've you've dabbled as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I certainly have. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it too. I love it too. Grand. So, so that's kind of your honourable mention. Good shout, good shout. Mine, uh, mine for very similar. Obviously, not so much kind of driving or getting stuck in the tree, uh, but mine is the division. Uh, very similar to it's, it's that online gaming that, that I kind of I've missed. I think is that kind of group of people um, playing a game, and the division would just really just ticked a lot of uh, a lot of boxes for me. It was just I got I got hooked in as as people who kind of listen to the pod kind of heard it. I got hooked into those those beats very early on I think there was an alpha then there was a beta and everyone was kind of playing it and we suddenly were like this is actually this is good you know this is a good game there's mm-hmm. a good mechanic here um, and and it just drew me into that I like this you know this is this is something quite special we all bought the ultimate edition um, and then kind of jumped into the division um, I think the only reason why it probably doesn't hit my top three and it is an honorable mention is because it, it got complicated it got quite complicated every time you kind of went in similar to um similar to destiny is that you go into there and then suddenly there was a new house in destiny and with the division suddenly there was a new um there was a new mode or there was a new currency that you now had to kind of get up and you had to level that currency up and sometimes that kind of got a little bit a little bit complicated and i think if you fire the game up now it's it's still a fantastic game and only kind of a couple of pods ago we were talking about that new mode where everything's stripped down and we were having great fun again with that but before then it kind of just got a little bit complicated but but that's the only negative and that's the reason why it never kind of made my top three but the fact that um you know we jumped in for ages and just played this game for just hours and hours i mean james are you unfortunately you kind of because of broadband um and, yes and the company we will not name uh but you know you dropped off but it was kind of very much kind of friend of the show manny and friend of the friend of the show matt uh you know the three of us kind of just took on um the division and just kind of played and just kind of leveled up together and helped each other kind of get through to that so you know i was really thankful to those guys because we really kind of just just had a real good camaraderie going and and it even was a bit of a throwback to old xbox live because there was one night where we were playing the dark zone and we came across two guys who were just kind of following us it was very weird i think i've told this story on the on the pod but we were they were just following us it was just very so wherever we looked around the corner they were there you know they were just kind of we were star jumping they started star jumping but then we got a couple of messages on xbox live saying you know can we hang with you guys we're not on mic because we're talking privately and we said that's fine we're talking privately too because i don't think the in-game chat worked as well as everybody wanted it to because we should have been able to 
to hear those guys as we got close to them um so we we then suddenly um we were then playing with them we kind of went into the dark zone we kind of did quite a lot of drops with them and then they just kind of went their own way and then when they they kind of left the the three of us they just kind of left and suddenly you got that kind of ping and there was a friend's request and this is very much kind of what i was saying about when i used to play ghost recon um back in the the day on the xbox 360 when it first started that every kind of game of ghost recon you got a, a new friend you know you got a friend's request and suddenly destiny and division sorry not destiny the division gave me this again and it was just really cool and those guys are still on my friends list i've jumped into the division with them um don't know what they what they sound like but we've jumped in and we've played again with them because we just kind of stay off mic but it was just the fact that that happened um that i just really wanted to give a, a, a honorable mention to the division because i just I really enjoyed it I, th- I think they did something really smart at the end, or at least I consider it really smart with their survival pack. Yes. Because um, I, th- I think we said last time, I've had real problems trying to catch up levels with you, so I've just stopped. You're so far ahead, I just stopped. But the survival pack just leveled the playing field completely, and so it was so nice for me to actually be able to enjoy the game again, mm. long after I thought I'd missed my opportunity. So the fact we could all jump in, starting from scratch, level zero in the special mode, was was brilliant, because it brought back all those reasons why I thought Division, when it was quite pure, without the overcomplicated nature of all the different currencies and tech and stuff like that, it just works so nicely because I think the setting is wonderful. Like the squad movement is good, and you know it can be a bit grindy with all the numbers popping off people's heads. But hey, it's quite nice to see how much damage you're doing at times. So yeah, I I really like the fact this has made your list. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I just think it's fantastic. You know, it, the way the dark zone, the multiplayer mechanic, the way they did the dark zone, the fact that you know people can just turn on you. You are constantly um, kind of you, you're there. It's very tense, you know, and it's just it's just such a great game. And I I do hope that maybe we'll get a division two someday um that just kind of resets it all and we can kind of start again and maybe some of the some of the issues that they had at the start just kind of all get kind of fixed and we we have a a more robust game but it's definitely if there was the the division chicago or the division something i would definitely kind of jump in and you know and one of the things i think we have to say about the division is how gorgeous that game looked i mean manny showed me what it looked like on 4k running on his pc and oh my god that was gorgeous but running on the Xbox One, it looked absolutely stunning. You know, there were, there were so many screenshots that, that all of us did. You know, whenever we come across a snowy vista, we were just like, ping, you know, another screenshot saved. So I just, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very excited. I, I do, I do love the division. Um, so before we get to that uh, top three list, we have missed opportunities. Um, now, James, you've we've spoke about the, my kind of missed opportunity quite a lot, um, but I think for me um, and Darren, I think this is kind of the same as you. Um, my missed opportunity is is Hitman. Yeah, mine is too. My missed opportunity, and the missed opportunity we discussed about was something that. Um, had passed us by or maybe something that one of us has been talking about they've been playing and we were excited about but we never got around to playing and mine's the same i was thinking about what it might be and it was nearly overwatch it was nearly overwatch but you know what with james talking about it over the last few weeks mm. they, sorry they, it, it had to be hitman it had to be hitman i'm and he's done it again tonight <laughs> <laughs> i, I don't want to it yeah, earlier on I was sort of like thinking oh man I kind of want to talk about Hitman too much because we're going to talk about it later but I was just thinking you were talking about it and I was just like crikey I can't wait to get this like the full box set at the end of January because it just sounds great it just it just sounds so good you've sold it hook line and sinker to me and I I can't wait to get involved in it it just sounds like such a great a great game just watching life go by a bit like Groundhog Day you're watching everything go by <laughs> and then you sort of memorise it or you go right, I'll slip behind here I, they won't see me blah 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 and they just that sandbox gameplay and I remember I think I've mentioned it before the first Hitman and I really loved that and it just sounds like this is going to be as amazing as that was when mm. I first played that but in you know in today's in today's graphics it's just awesome are you going to get that on Xbox One <clears throat> That's why I asked actually earlier. So James is playing it on Xbox. So yeah, I'm, I'm playing on it. it. I'm playing on Xbox One as well. Um, I'm going to get it with the crew. Yay. Yes, absolutely. You know, especially if there's leaderboards. By the sounds of it, that could oh be yes, fun. <laughs> join join the challenge. <laughs> I just think, and you know, that re-release will probably invigorate it as well with with, with more people. But mm. I mean, I, I I just think it 
Yeah, it just sounds wonderful. I'm really excited about it. And I remember we reported on it when it was first announced that it was going to be episodic. And we were a little bit doubtful about whether that would be the correct formula. And it seems that they, you know, they stuck gold with it. And it's a really good way of doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy this is... Uh, you guys have been persuaded by my... Uh, <laughs> just I just guess monologues at times just because I like it so much. Yeah, I I, th- I think even when I started up with what I've been playing over the holidays, I thought well, I've spoken about it the last two times I've been on. I should I should keep it short. But no, as soon as I started talking, I just kept remembering really nice things or really exciting things in game that uh, that happened. So uh, yes, yeah, play it. Fantastic. <laughs> so James, so that's kind of Hitman was our missed opportunity. What was your missed opportunity? What was the game that you never got to but well, I, really wanted? I to? always feel bad that it's not one that you guys have been waxing lyrical about now. But um, <laughs> my missed opportunity is Doom. Right. I've listened to ah, a yeah. lot of Game of the Year sort of style podcasts over the Christmas break. Um, it's a great way to get housework done, and several of them have been really bigging up Doom because I think when it first came out, I just pushed it aside as going well. I, I liked the original Doom in concept and Doom 3 was a bit of a letdown and I just thought it was something that had had its day and it was just another another remake trying to reboot itself, you know, it's here we go again, it's Doom. It's just Doom, yeah, that's yeah. what I felt, yeah. But it it sounds like it's just such a high energy, really good campaign that I really should go back to to try and play this because it seems to have got um, a humour, a knowing humour about what Doom was, what Doom is now, but mm. also it's tried to modernise itself to fit in with the world of today's shooters in, in a way that you don't think is dated or just pandering to like a Call of Duty cl- crowd. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I played it when, it when it came out and I just love the fact that it taught me a brand new mechanic of uh, to play a first person shooter i had to to start off with i was very much kind of i've got my gun so i'm gonna be here i'm gonna stay back and i'm gonna try and pick everyone off but quickly i kind of ran out bullets so what you have to do is you have to get in close and when they start flashing when the enemies start flashing you have to kind of melee them you have to get in there and it was a completely different mechanic to to play in this game and you know it looked fantastic on the xbox one but it was just the way that this game was just teaching me something knew it. I was playing it in a completely different way and to start off with it felt alien but by the end of it with the guns that I was getting and the, and the just the badassery that was kind of wrapped around in the doom I just absolutely loved it and it was just one of those games that when I finished it was I mean the final bosses were just like wow they were incredible but they were and hard but they were just absolutely fantastic and when you did finish you just really had this sense of achievement it was it was fantastic yeah, I feel I missed it. It's weird, and um, I don't know when I've. I haven't got. I don't know when I'm going to get time, but it's definitely. Yeah, I agree. I've heard so much positive, um, so many positive reports about it, and it just sounds like everybody just says it's just great fun, mm. a great fun, rollicking, bloodthirsty romp, <laughs> um, which, which puts you in mind of the old Doom, and I, I, I love the old Doom. Um, so yeah, and you know it runs really well. It's beautiful looking as well. It runs really slick at sixty frames per second, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to play it too. I just don't know where. I played the demo though. I enjoyed it. I remember you talking about it when you played it too, Anthony, and that you that you loved it too. And it is great that they've sort of modernised it, but kept at heart what it's about. And we discussed it when it was announced to be released. We we're like, can they do that? And they, it sounds like they really did. So that's fantastic. I mean, the fantastic thing about Doom right now is on the PlayStation Network, and I think on the same on the uh, X- Xbox, it's like nineteen ninety nine. You know, it's they've it's because it's been out for a while. Everybody has it. Everyone's played it. They have discounted it quite high, quite uh, extensively. So it is. It's as cheap as chips to kind of Tumbridge Wells chips um, to, uh, to, kind of, <laughs> to 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 pick up and, and to play now. And it was just it's such a great game. It really is. You know, especially with with services like Boomerang. You know, to just pick it up, play it over a weekend, and just kind of really just enjoy it. I never really dabbled in the multiplayer because um, I played the multiplayer beta and just got killed a lot. So I just kind of left them when i bought the disc version i just left the um i left that that multiplayer alone and i just played the campaign and did a call of duty um, which is like play the campaign finish it take it back to game and just get some credits and that's kind of what i did with doom and it was a thoroughly enjoyable game so right so that's everyone's missed opportunity now it's time to kind of get into the nitty gritty so um so what we do is we'll have a bit of a round robin go for uh, from kind of three to one um james do you want to kick us off with your first one 
Yeah, but the first one is The Witness, which actually surprises me that I've included it on the list because I there's part of me that absolutely hated the game when I finished. <laughs> um, it's, I, it's, a, it's a real battle inside me for this one because for 98% of this game, I thought it was wonderful. Um, wow. I thought the colourful world that they generated was really exciting to look around. I thought the puzzles they put in it were were really taxing at times, and so there were proper eureka moments. Um, I mean, it's the first time I've I've got graph paper out and started cutting shapes and doing little puzzle matches, and I had notebooks scrawled with possible clues or little hints of how I should do different uh, d- puzzle types. It's it's one of the best puzzle games I think I've ever played because it just sinks itself into the world so well. And when the world itself becomes part of the puzzles or clues how to solve the puzzles, you know that they've got you hooked. And it, it's just wonderful. And in the same way, I think we were talking earlier about having Hitman Vision or Tony Hawk's Vision. It, it got to the point where I was like l- looking at the trees outside of my window at work and going, huh. There could be... I think I can see the solution to this maze that doesn't exist because the witness has got its hooks into me so much. Um, so yeah, it's an absolutely wonderful puzzle game. It's just the ending wound me up so much. Um, are we doing spoilers? Yeah, I think we can. Think okay. We can. So yes. Okay, so at the end of it, the the whole point of the witness is that you're going to go down into the into a basically a, a, a super villain's lair that's contained within a mountain. So it's it's quite spectacular, mm. and to unlock that, you have to trigger lasers that um, are, are triggered by solving batches of puzzles. And so I went around the entire island solving every single batch of puzzles, whether it be like the ones that you had to map from the trees, whether it be the ones we had to look for different coloured shapes that wouldn't really help if you're colourblind. I, I did all of them and activated all the lasers. Got down to the bottom of the mountain, solved the last couple of puzzles, went in what can only be described as the Charlie Chocolate glass elevator. <laughs> um And then it did something that made me want to take the disc out, scratch it, burn it, grind it, and then send it into space. (laughs) The elevator took me back to the start of the level. And as it took me through the fly-through of the level, it, it turned off every single laser as I went. As if to signify to me that I'd done something wrong. As if what you have just spent so many hours puzzling over didn't matter. And it just, and this is obviously my interpretation. I know I've spoken to friends at work who didn't see this as an issue or even a thing. They just thought, ah, it's moving me to another part. But I took it as such a slight on what I'd been working so hard towards that I just hated it, this game, for months for what it had done to me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that, that personal hang up aside, I have actually finally been able to put that, put that on, hopefully on the shelf to, to forgive it. <laughs> um, but I think the actual, like, the most of the game is absolutely brilliant. It will test it must you have been, in ways. It, it must have been wonderful to elicit such anger. I, Ali, Ali some thought magic. someone had died the way I was ranting around the house. Like, did you see what this game has done? <laughs> it's just, ah. it's just put you back at the. D- does it mean so much more than just putting me back there? But it's by turning off all of those lasers, it's just cancelling out all of those puzzles that you thought yeah. you were very clever, uh, yeah. you know, kind of solving. I mean, because I, uh, you know, that that was one of the games where you'd wake up and you've solved a puzzle. You know, it was like back when I was a coder, where I couldn't quite figure out something when I was a developer, and I couldn't quite figure it out. But then when I was asleep, my brain would figure it out for me. The witness yeah. was just like that, you know. It was like, ah, I know what I. It's shadows, right? I know what I need to do, and then I had to wait until I got home from work to then be able to kind of try out my theory, you know. So to have it, I mean, I never got to the end because I'm just not that clever. Uh, but you know, to have because it got to a point with the witness for me where it got to a point where it was like, again, it's kind of like fun. The fun stops, and it just became frustrating, um, and I just couldn't get past it, and I didn't want to go on the internet to try and figure out. A, uh, a puzzle and I think yeah. the way that you were playing it James where you were just that was all you were playing so that was the way to do it because if you kind of try to play something else then go back to the witness you would forget the build up to that puzzle because that's what it did really well was when you went into an area you would get this kind of like there's an easy puzzle there's a harder pu-, and then it would just the difficulty would just ramp up uh, until you get to that kind of last 
kind of thing that you need to uh, to unlock for that area. And I just think that uh, by leaving it, you, your brain just kind of switches off to where you were in uh, with a witness. But just to have that as the end point, I was like, oh my god, that would just frustrate the hell out of me. <laughs> it reminds me of Fez a little bit from your description. If you ever played Fez, oh, that was a great game. Yeah, yeah. just the way the the, pu- the way the puzzles are laid out. Not obviously Fez is kind of 2D as opposed to 3D but yeah just your description there it just reminded me of it but yeah um, <clears throat> I just you know yeah, you must have loved it to hate it <laughs> yep <laughs> well, they say love, love is very close to hate I think it is yeah yeah <laughs> indeed so Darren number three on your list uh, what's number three on your game of the year list we've discussed it already so I, that's why I didn't comment much when we discussed it a moment ago um, and I won't comment much now because we know how good it is Forza Horizon 3 is my number three um, what a game. Beautifully crafted open world. Racing that seems to have evolved in that game through the series. I mean, I haven't played all the other games really, but it seems that it's developed through the series into something that I don't think they can beat. I, I think they've got the, the, they're victims of their own genius in a way. I don't know how they can make this game better for Forza Horizon 4, but maybe they, maybe, maybe you said that, Anthony, after Forza Horizon 2, because there, there's just something about this game. Beautiful, just so playable, great feel to the vehicles. The seamless single and multiplayer transitions, I thought, mm. was just beautiful. Um, all the challenges, as well as the core game, just the challenges that you've spoken about. Hundreds of hours of play, just you know, infinite replay value. It's like, why play? I almost feel like, why do you need another car game until the next Forza? I really do. It, for me, it hits everything. It felt like, it felt like Project Gotham to me sort of born again it it reminded me of msr which was before project gotham um it reminded me of burnout mm. it took me into all these all my favorite racing games um it it sort of hearkened me to and i loved it for it sublime game love it so it's my my number three Excellent stuff. It was just that, that, that when you say about kind of like Project Gotham, that kudos, the kudos system, which yeah, kind yeah. Of in Forza Horizon is the skill system. You know, it's building just, it up. Yeah. yeah, it really is. It's just the athletes. DJs, the skill songs. Yeah, I, I, sometimes a tuner come on, and it's just I love the soundtrack built into that game, and it just they thought about it, and I it's just so I just got so pumped up, and the way you could just free drive and the C R oh, man, yeah. beautiful, beautiful, and then. And then I played it in HDR, and it got even more beautiful. Wow! Yeah, love it. Fantastic. Right, my number, uh, my number three um, is, uh, which also kind of has a bit of a crossover in James's list as well, is um, Overcooked. I think this this game Wonderful. is just one of the best games this year. <laughs> you know, it's 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 one of the games as we've mentioned, kind of time and time. Is it's one of those ones that's kind of made me laugh, smile cry be worried for my life <laughs> as my good lady wife kind of kills asleep sleep with one eye open because i failed to do a kitchen you know it is, it is i'm so thankful for skyrim because like uh, we've got skyrim nicola is like so absorbed with skyrim again um because we've got the special edition on the xbox one and um so she forgot about the last level that we haven't done in overcooked which was really good uh because i don't think i could have handled that pressure over the over christmas uh but overcooked but back to overcooked overcooked cooked is just absolutely fantastic i mean james it's just it's kind of one of those games that just came from nowhere it was just one of those games that was like i like the look of this this looks quite cool picked it up started playing it brought nicola into it big mistake brought nicola into it and then you know and from there on you know hours of fun um from from this game that has has since given us two pieces of dlc as well yeah i mean this is number two on my list and I honestly can't remember how I came across it, but I, for me, it's only ever a co-op game as well. I mean, you can play the whole thing single player because I know Nicola went through and got your achievements for you. Mm. Um, but it's just so tied into a cooperative experience, just the way you have to try and balance a kitchen off against each other. And I think what actually makes this game excel is how wonderfully... Um, ghost games have set up those kitchens to be just awkward enough that one person can't really do it efficiently um so you have you have to get a system you have to work together you have to come up with a way of fulfilling those orders quickly i mean you can just one person run around and do it but you won't get the high score and it's just so delicately balanced that i think if it just had 
And if another level designer had been on it, I don't think this would have been anywhere near on my list. There's a certain wonder of just how subtly designed those things are. Absolutely. I mean, for me, I thought it was really good that when we were at EGX this year, that we got to talk to one of the devs at uh, from Ghost Town Games. I mean, they're only they're a two man team from Cambridge who built Overcooked. You know, this is this is a two person game, and you know, and I did you know we got to say I got to say thanks you know to someone that just this game like I say came out of nowhere. It's just and you're right, you know, all of the levels are perfectly designed. They are just and it's just so much. There is just nothing I would change about this game. I guess the only thing I would change would potentially. Be um, online co-op, but I'm not sure if that would work because you'd just be screaming at each other over the <laughs> internet. Uh, and maybe leaderboards, but you know that's just like fine nitpicking on a, on a game that is just perfect. You know, and yeah. I can't wait for more. It, it's 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 one of those games that when the last or lost morsel um, came out. Nicola was just generally excited and she doesn't get excited a lot uh, pretty much kind of uh, hardly ever like about kind of content like games or, or movies but she was just she was just generally excited about this kind of new one and we just jumped in played it in a night and just absolutely loved it and then the same with the, the festive um, the festive seasoning uh, both those DLC packs were just highlights in the Chestnut House this year and it, that was just so much fun and I just do love I love telling people about it as well and trying to explain and then they go off and play it and then you kind of hear you know they either say thank you or like what did you just give us you know? <laughs> uh, i mean a friend of a friend of mine, uh, mine and a friend of the show Stuart, you know he kind of played it with his wife and he kind of i think after a couple of failed attempts he's like can i borrow your wife because mine just doesn't play this game you know it's just like it's shouting at me all the time and i was like you know you don't want mine because she's scary <laughs> so you know it's just that it's just kind of having hearing that kind of fun and you know hearing my family play it as well and hearing them trying to play it as four people which i think could be quite complex i mean darren you you played it with three as well didn't you with uh, with sam playing as well yeah four if i include my mum because she came around one night actually over christmas fantastic um, what was that like it was all right <laughs> Was it chaos? It was, it was, was it chaos trying to explain it to your mum for like the first time? Yes, it was. Especially as Sam picked the level and went out to about level ten for the first oh go. Oh my god, your poor mum! <laughs> we went back to the beginning and explained it, and you know, we started to gel. We started to gel with it, and there is, it's beautifully crafted, isn't it? Like you, you guys have said it all about this game. It's a beautiful game. It's so lovingly crafted, and the perf- perfection of the difficulty and the way that it ramps up and the subtleties of it. It's just it's just all comes together to make something magical, yeah. and it might not feel like magic when you're shouting at each other to bring over <laughs> the saucepan <laughs> or get the fire extinguisher. But as a sum of the parts, uh, it's just uh, it's a phenomenal game, and uh, yeah, we love it over here in the in house Whitam, and yeah, it's it's great. I'm full, and it's manageable, you know, on four player. I'm, I'm talking about with my mum, who's mm. no gamer, and a five year old. It was still fun. It was still really good. Um, and whoever man, thought up, we've got some way to go on it. Exactly. Whoever thought up flame throwing uh, a turkey <laughs> just to take all my money you know, because you're a genius. You know that was just that was just so much fun. And okay, that's what I mean. It's just they have the right they have the right sensibility about this game. They have the right kind of they have the, whoever those guys that are, are building this in Ghost Town Games. They they are kind of clicked into kind of our consciousness because the, everything just seems right and fun and it's just there's nothing about this game where you go oh I would have done that it's just absolutely just pure joy perfectly perfectly balanced yeah everything yeah it's good so Darren on to your number two so your number two for this for 2016 what's that my number two is Uncharted 4 which I loved um, yeah what can I say Nathan Drake's last hurrah as the gang exploded onto the PS4 in their rip roaring adventure, I think not only, I think it didn't just do the console justice in terms of the visuals and the story, which were great. It also showed how well Naughty Dog can handle a whole series with love and passion, and the, I like the way that they delivered that experience to the players, um, and met the expectation that everybody had. I think they, they you know, they met if not exceeded the expectation that was there from from you know all the gamers that were waiting for the next one including myself and i think it's nice to see an ip that they had sort of the courage to close the ip um and to see a story end and not feel that it's being constantly pinched and squeezed and milked um for years and years and years 
forever, you know, and lose that. You mm. feel like a game could lose its passion. I, I kind of admired the courage for that. The set pieces in that game were amazing. I, I, it just, it just felt like an explosive adventure. You know, from from going in from from start to finish, it dragged me along on that roller coaster in a in a world of action adventure. You know, your your faux Indiana Jones adventure in. But in such amazing visuals, man, it staggered me. Um, and I say that about ending the story, which they have with Nate, with Nathan Drake. But I've, of course, we've got Chloe Fraser's adventures to look forward to now in the future, which was, which was a surprise. Um, but yeah, I, I just I thought it was a wonderful game. As you know, I've been a fan of the, the series since the first one, um, sort of flagship PlayStation games since uh, since PlayStation Three. So yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't not include it, so that's that's my number two game. Do you think they have finished with Nate? Because I mean, they didn't. It, you know, again, kind of spoilers, but they they didn't kind of conclude. There would the you know, you could very easily pick up a new adventure from Nate the way that the game ended. I got the feeling it was finished. Hmm. Um, oh, oh, it definitely but, yeah, kind but, of went. But, Here's the but, final, yeah, they, you know, as it, credits roll. But they could easily yeah. go. Oh, we need you to they, do just one more adventure, Nate. Yeah, yeah. You're the only man for the job. Yeah, they could do that. There's a crystal and, skull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting too old for this. He, says. he said that a few times in in four, actually. Um, so yeah, they they could do it. But I think I prefer what they seem to have decided to do, which is go off on a tangent with the other characters. Or with uh, with Chloe in particular, and then maybe there'll be another character within her adventure that can lead another um, another few adventures in a different direction. Mm. I I'm quite happy. I I'd probably be happy if they carried on because I like the characters, but I do like the way that they closed it, and I'm kind of happy for them to leave it closed. I I'd, I'd prefer them to leave it like that, um, but you know. They could easily do it. Couldn't yeah, they? time will tell. And when, if they did, you know, give me a year or two, and I'll be probably saying, oh, "I wish there was another Nathan Drake adventure." <laughs> yeah. I had a quick dabble in the um, the Horde mode um, just before the Christmas break, and a quick dabble in the Horde mode for uh, Uncharted, um, and that was good fun. I just I was paired into a room with a couple of people that weren't on mic, um, but uh, it was just good fun. We just kind of had a bit of a run around. There's waves upon waves of bad guys, um, so that was the that got kind of uh, it started very easy. But the, the difficulty does ramp up quite quickly, similar to Horde, um, and that was really good fun. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely something I would wouldn't mind kind of grabbing a group of people and kind of jumping into because it was uh, it was quite fun. Mm, mm, yeah, great game. So, uh, right, I guess that's me, isn't it? So, uh, the, my number two, um, kind of building on, I think at the start of this year, I started playing Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, and then I started playing Gone Home, and then kind of played Gone Home, and then kind of, I was really getting into that kind of first person kind of walking simulator, and then along came my number two, um, which was, uh, which was Firewatch, um, and Firewatch kind of came out, and Firewatch really did, it hooked me, it really did, I really enjoyed the story, um, it just it, this is a game that just kind of the aesthetics of this game are just perfect. Ollie Moss, who I'm a big fan of, um, a, who is an artist, um, a UK based artist, who I'm a big fan of. I uh, have a t shirt with some of his work on it. I've got a Harry Potter poster coming for my office very soon. Um, you know, I'm just a huge fan of, uh, and then to suddenly see this in kind of like 3D and suddenly just to see all of these very chunky kind of uh, vistas very chunky characters you don't really see the characters but they have chunky knees and very chunky hands and, and everything just kind of just really it was just gorgeous it just really kind of just gelled really well and it, you kind of start on this 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 story which is about henry who is a kind of in a in an overwatch and then suddenly there's a, a mysterious thing happens down in the lake and you go down to there and right from that point the first time that you hear delilah who is the kind of your your uh, supervisor it just really just drew me in and i just absolutely loved it and just kind of played it all the way through um on the playstation 4 and i've actually bought it on on xbox one and i wanted to try and play it uh, over christmas um because i knew this was going to be in my game of the year um but i just just absolutely just loved firewatch so did any of you guys play it have you played firewatch yeah i, didn't I actually know yeah ali and i uh, played it through together because i think like you said we we went through a phase of playing things like Gone Home and mm. uh, I don't think we actually, actually made it to um, Everyone's Gone to the Rapture but the fire, Firewatch was was right up there I think I showed my list of favourite games of the year to Ali and she was quite upset it wasn't on there but you're <laughs> right, for me I think the characters 
yes. were some of the, the best fleshed out characters that we've seen in a long time because mm. it wasn't just a straight out man goes out to job. It was there was some nice backstory about why he was there and how he was having to deal with some you know emotions from from baggage from the past and yes. how Delilah fitted in that and it was it was some quite complex things sent set against a backdrop of this almost I don't know it was, it was a thriller at times mm-hmm. I guess mm-hmm. just dropping hints that there might be something nefarious going on set against these beautifully lit skies as well across a national forest mm. so i think it delivered really in looks and storytelling it, it really did it was like the first time that you the first time like i say you see that there's a fire or that someone's letting off fireworks that's how the kind of story starts you're just like oh int- you know you're going down to the woods and there is this intrigue that's happening you just want to try and find out and then and then that story unfolds i'm trying not to kind of be spoiler even though we've said we get spoilers but this is something yeah, especially darren if you haven't played it you know, it's a game to jump in when you have that spare for six hours maybe not even that you know and it, it is mm. just it's one of those those the, the, right James it is just like a thriller at times and and it's just absolutely just stunning to play and just and it was it was just one of those games where right up to the end right up to the last minute there was just I just I loved every minute of it and even when it finished I didn't I kind of didn't want it to finish because I was like no that can't be it you know the way that the game ends I was just like no because yeah, I wanted more I wanted to know what yes. happened beyond that point absolutely got to there I wanted to know what happened when you kind of but that's it you know and I wanted these characters to meet I wanted them to I wanted to to see that. I I kept thinking that because you never see Henry, you see him in a sketch. Um, you see him in a sketch, um, but you never really see Henry. You never really see kind of Delilah. And I really wanted like the last bit to actually be both of these people. And I was just that's what I was rooting for. And it was just it was just absolutely superb. And I love the fact that when you're playing this game as you're saying James he has some things that he needs to work out but it kept jumping in time it was almost like three months later six months later and then it, it would just it would just kind of jump into uh, into different time time zones and it was just it was oh, I just absolutely loved it it was such a great game so yeah though Firewatch Firewatch is it was almost it was almost my game of the year uh, but I have one that just kind of gave me a little bit more fun than that um, so James do you want to reveal what is your game of the year 2016 it's going to be a shock. Everyone needs to sit down for this one. It's going to come as a surprise. It is indeed Hitman. Um, <sighs> ever- <laughs> awesome gasp ever- there, Darren. <laughs> ever since I picked up the first uh, episode with Paris and stuff, I think it was like late summer or... And I came late to the party, but I just wanted to see what it was like because I've never really played a Hitman before. And I was just really impressed with what they had done with this generation of consoles, how they had used the power at their disposal to create not you know not more beautiful worlds, not massive open open worlds, but just really complex levels that are basically just this clockwork machine of lots of actors walking around doing their thing, just like proposing in trouble and obstacles in their way. And it's just this superb sandbox of chaos that you have to effectively tiptoe through. And you can easily, if if you disturb this very precise machine going on around you, all hell can break loose. You know, <laughs> you set one foot wrong and there's people trying to shoot you in every direction. So you're running off trying to either jump down a drain pipe or knock out a chef in a in a cupboard because you can steal his identity. And, you know, just just because you've changed your hat, they don't know it's you. But hey, it's... It's beautiful. I think you can play it in so many ways as well. You can play the super stealthy approach, or you can just let things go to hell and then just try and adapt as you go through. And both are equally as fun as each other, as I find. You know, there's times I just want to do that perfect run. I want to make sure that I am the master assassin, that no one sees me. I am merely death. I'm a shadow. I wisp in and I wisp out. There's others I will quite happily throw a wrench at the first person I see just to set the balls rolling and see what madness falls out from it. Wow. It's, I, just, I just think it's wonderful and I cannot wait for the second season to give me more maps to play with. So wow. is, there, is there anything for you to kind of... Have they announced the second season? They have, yeah. I think right. it was uh, start of December they have announced they are definitely coming back for a second season. Wow. Um, so I'm hoping they see, 
keep the same sort of cadence of like a new map every couple of months because mm. that's the perfect time I th- hopefully that will break my addiction hopefully that means that i can dive in play it solidly for a fortnight and then play other things hopefully this will save me and allow my podcast reviews of what i've been playing not just be one note for next year <laughs> but the, <laughs> that's it, a, it's, it's, it's time it's like the episode that you're currently on yes. you just hear more about it and yep. you're just wetting mine and anthony's appetites to get in there <laughs> absolutely well you may you know you made me um, you, you didn't make me. You didn't actually buy it, but you, by listening to you, kind of made me want to just kind of jump into this. And I bought the intro pack, and and I'm just, and I'm absolutely loving kind of what I'm playing so far. And it's just, and, and also, you know, the great thing that I thought that, that you did was, was you created your own um, challenge as well, and you created your own hit that, that we then had to then jump into. We could then just try and and try and solve. And I just think that was just absolutely fantastic. I mean, you said that you relate to the game. I mean, obviously, Darren and I are even later to it, but it's definitely. Something something that I want to continue playing so when you jumped into it were, was kind of everything out for it or do you, have you had to wait for new maps to become or new episodes to become available I think when I first started I think there were two more maps to come um, but rather than sort of rush through and, and and experience those as they happened I found I was just having so much fun on the early tutorial levels. I just mm. didn't want to rush through it. Even when elusive targets came out for maps that I hadn't played on, uh, the elusive targets being these very time-sensitive one-shot-on-their-gone missions, I decided not to tackle those until I'd seen all of the game through or had played their level. Because um, I just I was just having so much fun finding out all the little moving parts and where they went and what they did. Because there's, there's certain like butterfly effects where you can just knock like a sh- in in the Marrakesh level. There is a chef that apparently does nothing. Like from the look of it, he does nothing. He just sits there and sleeps the entire day. Mm. But if you turn on a specific radio, he will walk halfway across town and pick up a plate of food, then walk all the way back across town again and feed it to one of your targets. But to watch that happen, it takes chance to actually see that ball starting to roll and then some dedication to see it going back and forth over it. Because like I said, I can spend an hour just wandering around seeing what bits do. And there's, I think it's partly the dev in me, part of me just wanting to see behind the curtain and see how it works but also just wanting to know that every bit of life in this level means something almost. So do you think that you have to play the game like that or can you No, no. That is just no, and that's the that, great that's thing the, about it though, isn't it? That you can be you could be kind of at this intro level and just go I need to take that person out I'm going to go kind of just not be seen and to to the level that you've got which is like setting all of these different balls in motion. Yeah, because I, I can tell from a couple of the leaderboards that I look at that one of my friends who is playing, and I know he's played it for a lot and he enjoys it, but I can tell from the way his scores are on the leaderboards mm. that he doesn't give a monkey's about that. The fact that he's just, <laughs> but he is the one that walks in and throws a spanner at the first person he sees to get their hat and then off he goes. And they're like, fair mm. play. Like, the amount of corpses he leaves behind might leave him a very low score, but that's how he's playing it, so that's cool. Yeah. That's just absolutely fantastic. That is so, so superb. So what has been the highlight of Hitman? What Has there been kind of one level that has really kind of stood out for you? Uh, for, for me, it's Sapienza, which is the second big level. And it's uh, the town on the... It's, it's the level set on the Amalfi Coast. Mm. And it's got that perfect mix of you have to sneak your way through a, a mansion... So you get the chance to dress up as either the bodyguards or the house staff or the chef. So it gives you that nice option there. But also there's a small town that surrounds it. And there are just really nice linked opportunities that go that you might not think the church is linked to the house at all. But then the vicar might go up to it or or with a certain set of events, your targets might come to confessional. And it's just the fact that it has... It, it was what basically taught me that everything has a butterfly effect mm. at that point in time. Even if it's the fact that you, you you annoy half the police, you cannot walk through town safely again. But it's just such a nice, bright, open world with just a myriad ways of trying to enter one small building. Wow, that sounds absolutely fantastic. But also, it's great fun when because when Ali sits down and, and watches with me, um, it's I always feel that I have to. I can't just like reload saves if things goes wrong or something. So when Ali watches me, that's when stuff goes weird and crazy. So that's <laughs> when I have to start you know, knocking people out, throwing them over ledges if they see me, and suddenly my kill count goes through the roof because I'm just trying to stay alive so that she'll stay around. So. That's realistic mode. Yes, yes. The <laughs> headless chicken approach. <laughs> 
Absolutely superb. Fantastic. So, James, your, your game of the year. Hitman Darren, what's your game of the year, sir? Um, it may not be a surprise. Dark Souls 3. <laughs> wow. It, it's quite interesting, isn't it? I guess anyone who has actually kind of listened to the pod will probably be able to w- work out what our kind of games of the year are. <laughs> Dark Souls 3. So, so, yeah, just absolutely to love that game. Mm. I spent over 100 hours on it this year wow um i was late to the party with it as well because when it came out because i'd left i sort of cooled off on bloodborne a little bit from 2015 so i don't know if you remember but i had bloodborne Mm. to finish and i did that i felt because i kind of duty bound to do it and there was something about bloodborne i didn't i don't understand why because they're very similar um but i didn't really enjoy it as much but i just did it because i the completionist in me made me do it and then when Dark Souls was released, I was kind of like cooled off on it a bit. I was like, yeah, I'm not ready for that. I've just gone through a load of pain with Bloodborne and I'm not ready for it. Um, but then I did get it anyway, um, later on. I think I got it as, as a birthday present. So I got it end of May, beginning of June. Um, and then I was ready, started off on the adventure and just uh, within minutes, it's really bizarre because they're very similar, that and Bloodborne, but because it was a Souls game and because of the, the environment was similar to the other Dark Souls games that I played, I was in love again within within minutes. And that was it. And I just dove into this new world and its lore and its characters and its kind of beautiful moroseness um, and and hard. Well, hard is the wrong word to, to, to describe it with, really, but it's um, it's rather stringent rule system um, that you must adhere to really if you want to survive you've got to learn its systems and I, I was in love with it and I just buried many hours into it and loved every single tentative step through the world mm. um, even now I've still got some DLC to plow through but it's just that I've been hit with a load of more games but for me as I've said before you know the main game I could, I've been through twice I, could, I finished it and then I was like, okay, went all the way through New Game Plus again to the end, where I waited by the bonfire for the DLC, um, and I've explored a little bit of the DLC. So I've sort of done it twice, but for me, I think you could just carry on completing it, because every time you finish it and you start New Game Plus or Plus Plus or Plus Plus Plus, <laughs> all the enemies in the game and all the bosses get increased strength. Um, makes it more challenging. You could argue it's more easy because you keep a lot of items apart from key items as well. But again, this one's another closing of of, of a series. Dark Souls 3, um, as far as we know, is the end of the Dark Souls trilogy. Um, and it's a fantastic end. It's got some great nods to the old games because these games, they don't act out the story in cutscenes. Um, it's You pick up the story through the descriptions of the items the rather minimal utterances from the the characters that inhabit the world, the sullen characters that inhabit the miserable world, and just from the the environment itself, you, you, the world sort of seeps into your pores from its its from its the way it's crafted, um, and it's kind of refreshing that you know that no non handheld thing again. I suppose mm. I think it's a perfect example of risk versus reward gameplay because. If you've stacked the currency in the game is souls, you could have like 10,000 souls, depending where you are in the game. That might be a very little amount, or it might be the whole world to you. And you enter a new area, and you know that if you enter the new area, you may get more souls to upgrade that to that level that you really want to get to, because that will help so much. But you know if you make one mistake, you loot, your souls will stay there, and you'll go back to the beginning, and you'll have to go through all that fighting again to get there, to retrieve them. And if you make a mistake, they're gone forever. Wow. Oh. It's so intricately crafted, the world as well. It twists and turns upon itself with shortcuts that reveal themselves to you as you play through the game that lead back to earlier parts. And you're like, oh, wow, that's took me to a save point bonfire. Oh, man, and it's the relief. It's just <laughs> amazing. Um, it's got great... That sort of leads me on to the tension, you know. Every tentative footstep, the tension builds in the game. The atmosphere is amazing. Um, and so is the boss designs. And the bosses are so fearsome and immense. Um, but everything in the game is beatable. Obviously, it's beatable. But it's not necessarily... The, the, it's got a reputation of being rock solid and all the rest of it. But it's just a matter of... you've got to, The game will teach you. If you do the wrong thing, <laughs> you'll die. And there's different ways to approach it. You know, you can be a spellcaster. You can fight as a melee uh, warrior. Um, but there are certain things. You just, you just have to be careful and aware 
all the time. You can't really rush in. Um, well, you, you could if you were very powerful, but the, the game just teaches you a way to play it. Hmm. And you, you, you get sucked into that play style, and it's just, uh, I find it gripping and very enjoyable. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sad to see that, that, that series close. I don't know if From Software are going to do anything similar again. Um, I could do with a real break anyway, to be honest, but a fitting end to a great trilogy. So Dark Souls 3, yeah. So, so do you honestly think it is wrapped up? I know we asked you this about Uncharted as well. It's <laughs> You're choosing the conclusion of several several franchises. Yeah, I, I, well, what can I say? I hope it is. They, the, the thing with Dark Souls, the law is so twisted and, and vague, they could do what they want. And it, yeah. the, the story, the, the, each, each Dark Souls game are only very um, tentatively linked. If they're linked to at all, it's just speculation in yeah. forums and things that you that you pick up and grasp upon. Um, so they could easily do another one. But I, they, they said that they were going to leave it there. They said they were going to leave it there. So I just think, yeah, fair enough. I'm, I, I choose to believe them. If they do decide to carry it on, I hope you know they take a good year or two's break first. Because I was a bit worried when Bloodborne came out and then Dark Souls 3 came out. It was too much, too quick, and we were going to get into some kind of six-month cycle, uh, and I didn't like that because I find these games, like a lot, of, like a, well, like a lot of quality games, you know, the speed of production and getting sort of saturated with them doesn't help uh, endear the audience. You know, I, I was kind of like, ah, oh, no, it, it just that kind of made me a bit standoffish, and I waited. I, I wasn't in the mood for Dark Souls after Bloodborne, as I, as I said, mm. Um, mm. because I'd sort of had my fill of that type of game. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, like I said, for Uncharted, they, they could make another one, but they said they wouldn't, and I think it's great because you can play all three isolated. Two's really on its own even more, but there's links, really, with one and three, and there's some great nods in three if you played all the others. And I don't know. It's another game that swept me away to a, you know another world. Really got sucked in, and it's one of them games where I was in bed at night and I was thinking, "Crikey, so what happened with that boss? Where did I go wrong?" And then it's kind of like, "Ah, what if I try this? What if I try that weapon?" Blah blah blah. Then next day, try it. Success. Ah, and there's nothing so rewarding as lighting that bonfire after boss defeat. Oh man, yeah, it's just a just a beautiful game. And it's- I've had I've had a soft spot since Demon Souls for them. It, it sounds to me like one of these games that I, if if I had the time to dedicate to, I'd I'd really enjoy because it has got that level of mastery that that you've got the other side of just learning a system and learning how to cope with it. And I think there's always something so satisfying when you find that in a game because Over- Overcooked is amazing in its own way, but it's got such a different level of systems and mastery that you have to try and sit down and figure out and i think that's what i've always admired of the dark soul series from afar yeah and such a variety of systems because you can pick one competency or blend a few but it's all about the levels you see you know how many levels are you going to invest in this or that or the other you can go up one skill tree but you can you could equally go up another one if you grind enough you can you can be equally competent in many um and then there's the online component hmm you know, I can I can put down I can offer myself up to the community to be summoned to help defeat a boss that I've just defeated or help in a level and people can summon me. And vice versa if I'm really stuck, I can make myself human in the game, for instance, and look around and summon other people to help me. And you can have parties of up to up to three. And but while you're doing that you can be invaded. Because you've got help, you then you're then vulnerable to people who want to invade your world. So there's that aspect as well, and there's PvP as well. There's all sorts of different strands that you can go by in the game, which, after the main sort of chunk of game, offer such variety. I mean, some people just love the, the PvP, just going in the arenas and bowing before each other and just duking it out. Or some people just like being mischievous and invading people. Some people just invade people. You can get... When you invade somebody else's world, usually you appear as a red phantom. And there's things in it like there's a ring that makes it so that you're not a red, not red when you invade a world, so you look friendly. And you'll get people that will like come into your world and you think that they're friendly because they're a white phantom. And they'll be all nice, nice <laughs> for so long and then they'll just kill you. <laughs> and then sort of do a you know, condescending dance and then go away. And then send you a cheeky message and stuff like that. And the way that the multiplayer works with only gestures and no speech... And the way that you can put down messages that you have to use 
snippets of text that are already there for you and the ingenious ways that people leave cryptic clues around it's just it all builds into something just quite wonderful and yeah it's a it's a great game so when you're playing multiplayer is it something that like if i was if i started playing dark souls if you convince me and i'm like yeah this sounds like great this sounds like a great game i want to jump in would you be able to help me on my quest or is it kind of a bit like journey where you don't know who is actually helping you it's somewhere in between, really. Right. I mean, you, you're kind of always playing multiplayer because the way to play it is online. Mm. And when you're playing it online, that's when you'll see messages um, all around the world giving you, well, they could be hints, they could be hindrances, warnings about what's coming up, for instance, say, um, up ahead, um, prepare to dash, you know, or something like that. Or, yeah. For look out to the right and that that would only happen when you're online so that's a good way to play it but if we were doing that then i would offer myself to be summoned to your world so what i would do is i we talk sort of not through the game because you can't mm. but i'd say right okay anthony what i'll do i'll put a summon sign and i'd say sort of under the stair somewhere out of the way i say i'll put a summon sign behind that staircase under mm. some barrels and then you'd be like okay and you you it would be probable that you would look in fact you might on dark souls 3 be able to do it by code because you could on bloodborne but I've never done that, you see. Right. But yeah, I would right. put a summon sign somewhere, and then I'd tell you where to get it, and then you would summon me, and I'd be in your world, and we'd we'd fight through together. Oh wow, that's really cool. Um, and vice versa, I could invite you to my world. If all three of us had it, you know, we we could arrange to all three of us collaborate through the entire game, hmm. um, like that, which would be beautiful. Um, but it is kind of easier by quite a degree when you've got help. But, you know, I, I did request help on my game because, oh, man, it was just tough and I was impatient. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it. And then and then in return, I offered myself up outside the boss gates to help other poor, weary travellers <laughs> that needed my assistance. And, and people help you. There's a great community spirit about it. When somebody comes into your world, they can they get the measure of you and they'll, they'll lead you around the entire map and show you things like point down and you'll get they'll show you a weapon or people will drop items some people it was seen on youtube acted out the shame scene out of game and thrones <laughs> game of thrones <laughs> with with like one of these bells that they picked up and they're all marching in a, pro- a phantom procession down the middle of the a medieval city ringing the bell <laughs> and stuff like that so it's just uh, it's just a great game i'm it's in my it's my top game hmm. for the base game and then you add on all the other facets and it just sort of adds to it and makes it you know even more of a of a great experience i mean i've only dabbled in the pvp uh and yeah i haven't really played a lot of the i think there's an arena where you can just you just battle all the time i haven't even touched that there's areas of the game and things you can do in that game that i haven't even gone to but i still spent hundreds over 100 hours in there and still loved every minute of it and i can still go through the whole game again and i've got the dlc to go through as well which is just like in a, an expansion, another world, another load of tough bosses to get to. It's kind of like an adventure game, Shadow of the Colossus bosses, but actually with a decent game in between, if you know. If you, if you know. <laughs> but, um, Shots fired. <laughs> but um, but I, I love Shadow of the Colossus. Um, so I sort of thought I could get away with that. Um, but yeah, so there you go, Dark Souls 3. Fantastic. And then finally my game of the year for 2016 is um, I've been quiet as we've mentioned it time and time on the pod already and that is Forza Horizon 3 um, so Forza Horizon 3 makes my kind of game of the year I I just think that We Are Playground um, uh, Playground Games and We Are Playground have done just a fantastic job on Forza Horizon this year, I mean Forza Horizon 2 and and you know, as as anyone kind of who listens to the pod knows that I'm a big Forza fan, I was looking forward to Forza Horizon three. You know, Forza Horizon six, Forza sorry, Forza six, Forza Horizon two were fantastic games. But there's just something about Forza Horizon three that has just just peaked. You know, I'm I'm a hundred plus hours. I had a quick look um, at the achievements. Uh, I had a quick look on the Xbox One dashboard uh, yesterday, just to kind of see where I was. And I'm over a hundred hours into this game. You know, I've got kind of a lot of the achievements. I think I've got something like 80% of the achievements. So I'm kind of really kind of, there's just some nitpicky ones. So I really have been invested in this game. And the single player 
the kind of offline, if you will, has was was absolutely fantastic. I just absolutely loved it. You know, there was everything that was just great about Forza Horizon game, but just seemed to be um, just taken to the next level with Forza Horizon Three. Um, as you mentioned earlier, Darren, you know, this was the first HDR game for the Xbox One S, so it had that extra level of shininess, um, even shinier if you got the PC version working in like 4K. But this was just something that I just was driving. I remember driving around on the beach, even in the demo um, that came out before the beta that came out before driving around that beach just looking at these vistas going this is just amazing you know this is just an absolutely just stunning game but it wasn't until I kind of I took it online as James as you were saying the reason why it's kind of uh, your honorable mention was that when we took it online as you or every, for everything that you've already said you know this this game just went to a whole new level for me it was the first time that I've ever taken a Forza game online because I think my brother or my family or, or mates or whoever I've been playing with I've always been kind of at different times so we've never kind of we've never got together i mean my brother who lives in canada my brother lives in lincoln we always said oh let's get together and i bought them copies i think of forza six and we're like let's get together and we will play and we never did it and then the fact that this year with forza horizon i've played darren with you james we played uh, just so many nights you know and, and and it's just it's just so much fun i haven't laughed this much at a forza game you know and there's everything and it's not only just that online silliness you know that was just and how bad i am when i'm racing online <laughs> I don't have that rewind button um, but <laughs> but it was also the blueprints it was also the leaderboards it was also all of that stuff as well that really did kind of just elevate this the fact that we could make up I can make up my own race or I could pick up Stuart's race or I could pick up your race James you know I could just pick up a blueprint and just race that blueprint and there was just something about that that was just was fantastic and with any Forza game there was that meta game where you know you 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 discovered a road and it said that Matt had discovered ten more roads than you. So you're like, right, I'm gonna just I want to get above that and not finish playing and not finish driving around the map until you got above Matt. You know, and, and then you could then go to bed and rest easy, only to find the next day he's above you again. You know, so it's those kind of things. And there was a real, real meta game around Forza this year with achievements as well, and it kind of almost gave my love for achievements it kind of revitalized that love for achievements with Forza Horizon where there was a group of us that were like ah, I've got that achievement you know and then showing it off and then tweeting about it or just kind of you know and there was something about that this year that just really really kicked in and I think everything about it the fun the time I've had the fact that I couldn't put it down over Christmas just makes Forza Horizon 3 my game of the year that's also I I, th- I think for, like the the back and forth you say between us all it was because the variety of things that you could do in there as well be it the you know the jumps or the high speeds or the roads conquered it just offered when one challenge started not drying up or you know we tried that for a while we'd suddenly switch to another and again it would just get an injection of life as we'd have to all try and play a different way to yes. do that be it exploring or just finding out how to tune your car as to get the optimum acceleration out of it it just it just kept giving in so many ways. Yeah, and it, you know, it made by playground games. It was a playground, mm. and it felt like it said to you, "What are you in the mood for?" You know, some games there's only one kind of racing. You know, it's round the track, round and round. That's what you're going to do. And this was just like I, ju- I just switch it on, and th- and then I think, "Oh, what do I feel like doing?" I feel like racing. Ah, uh, maybe not. I just feel like just just bombing it over the fields, you know. Or do <laughs> yeah. you feel like just getting a convoy and cruising around? Yeah. And it was just a wealth of different options to do. The variety, it's a beautiful thing to do. Just a playground of things to do in a car. Absolutely. I mean, for me, you know, previous Forza games have had me looking at the achievements and saying, okay, what's the what's the achievement for the highest level? Okay, that's level a hundred. Right, I'm going to play this game until I reach that. I've, I've, you know, I've, I did that just before Forza Horizon Three came out. I did that before. Or a Forza Six, I hit that one, and I'm like, right, I'm now ready for Forza Horizon Three, and you know, I'm way beyond that. I'm like level 230. You know, and the highest achievement is like 50 or something like that. And you know, and and one thing, least we not forget that Forza Horizon Three gave us a warthog. We were driving around <laughs> in warthogs, you know, uh, with the Halo <laughs> team playing exactly with the Halo, exactly spot and on, and a variety of horns depending on who you were. Yes, 
my mariachi horn will live on forever. But that's what I mean. It's just like all of the fun that we had, I just never associated with a Forza game. And to have this, I mean, the if I was in Darren's world, my worry is, is that Forza 7 is going to be dull. You know, if I was like yeah. to, to see the, you know, just like, I'm worried now that Forza 7 is going to be dull and that they really have to do something. Because I think Forza 3 has been quite a hit. Um, I think it's been quite a, there's been a lot of people, a lot of people that I mean over launch weekend, over that launch month, the when I looked at my friends list, it was just everyone was playing Forza Three, Forza Horizon Three. So I, I, I wonder what we're going to get this year. I wonder what it's normally we get an announcement at E three, and I wonder what E three is going to bring. You know, whether it will be some kind of just Forza that gives us a mixture of Forza Motorsports, Forza Horizon, Forza Apex. You know, gives us a mixture of that it becomes a platform, or if we're just going to get Forza Seven, and then what does that bring? You know, so it's it's a really interesting one. But I have had so much fun and i still haven't finished with um with forza there's still so much more and and it's kind of one of those things that again as i was saying it's kind of spurred on those achievements and i really want to get all of the achievements but some are really hard but i really just want to kind of get those achievements it's always nice when there's some achievements to go for after you feel like you finished the main game as well because that's what that's what i always look at for achievements and trophies to do i've mm. really enjoyed this game so l- give me some way of playing it differently yes yeah absolutely i mean like i'm at the moment with forza with forza um with the with the blizzard mountain i've i've actually favorited some achievements because you can go into an achievement and then you can hit x to favorite it because they're the ones they're all of the ones now i've now got at the top of the list that i'm trying to check off next and it's because once you once you finish all of the the um the showcase that is the blizzard mountain you then it then unlocks all of these different um championships that you then have to do and it's just like wow there's so much in here but it wasn't a case of oh there's a lot here it was like oh yes you know, there's so much more um, for me to play and there's just so many more kind of achievements I need to check off so that kind of makes Forza Horizon 3 I think my game the game of the year and it's quite nice to see that you know Daz it made your top three and and, uh, and James yeah. it also made your honourable mention Yep, hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> you had to beat. You had to beat Firewatch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is our uh, game of the year. So we've got Dark Souls, Hitman, Forza Three. It's been quite a good year, actually. Really, hasn't it? You know, if those are our top three, it's been a really good, really good year. Um, so, just one quick thing before we close out. I know we're running kind of uh, long, but before we close out, a quick prediction. A bit of fun for 2017. Uh, Daz, what's your prediction for 2017? Okay, cool. I'll be brief because, like you say, it's going on a while. I thought it was going to be a short one. Um, so here we go. Uh, my prediction for 2017 is about the Switch, the Nintendo Switch. I think it's going to have some fantastic games, but I, 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 I hope I'm proved wrong on this one. But my prediction is that people will pit power over fun. Um, so it'll have a good launch, but it'll dwindle off. Third-party devs will drift away, and Nintendo because of this, will make more of a final move into the mobile market. Uh, they'll sort of think, why spend the cash on console development when they don't need to? Um, then I'm going to extrapolate upon that. I think that move will be phenomenally successful, and then that will give them the confidence to consider partnering with either Microsoft or Sony for future console releases, without not on their own hardware, so they'll diversify away. That's a hell of a 12 months. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like the downfall. That's the downfall and rise of Nintendo in twelve months. Well, the, the, I suppose the twenty seventeen bit is just the, um, mm. the the switch will sort of will sort of burn brightly, but then dwindle, and then the rest will be sort of. I'm predicting what the uh, fallout from that in the future after probably after probably yeah after twenty seventeen. But there you go. That's my long term plan. Mm. I mean, I think it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll be, I'll, we what we're uh, Nine nine days away from hearing about we get a we get a switch event, don't we? In, in yeah. the, on the twelfth yeah. of January, thirteenth or twelfth of January. So I'll be really yeah. interested to see kind of what's coming from there. But it does worry me with the mini NES about the distribution and about how many units are going to be made and things like that. So it's just yeah. it's going to be. I mean, a- I'm going to get I'm, yeah, I'm going to get a switch, but I just and I hope to be proved wrong on that. But that's just my prediction. It's a sad prediction because I don't want it to come true, but I. I just, yeah. I'm sort of hoping that by predicting that that they'll get proved wrong. If you, do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll put it out there, and Reggie will say, "Ah, oh, I've heard Daz on that podcast. I'll prove him wrong." <laughs> well, we've already heard that. Uh, I think today, Mass Effect Andromeda 
they said that Mass Effect Andromeda, I think it was on a uh, it was on a, uh, a posting um, of an official posting that Mass Effect Andromeda will not be coming to Switch or Scorpion or Scorpio, not Scorpion. It won't be coming to a Scorpion. There you go. You've heard it here first uh, or Scorpio, so which was quite interesting um, to hear hear that. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, we'll have to wait and see. So Switch on um, James, your twenty seventeen prediction. Yeah, it's it's again not on the positive side, I apologise, but um, I predict this time next year I will still be waiting for VR to set my world alight. I cannot see anything in the pipeline more than experiences, and you know my little rant from a couple of weeks back, but um, I just don't think Resident Evil is going to do it, and I just can't see anything else meaty on the horizon. I, ho- I hope to be proved wrong, I hope that at E3 there will be a glut of PSVR games or games with VR sections that you can suddenly plug yourself in and it's something I want to go to as much as I want to go back into the world of Hitman or Rocket League or anything like that. Mm. But as it stands, yeah, I I just wonder in a year's time whether we might be looking at VR being still a novelty and not a necessity. Yeah, I think um, the lifeline I could throw you would be if you like to leap. If you like to leap, dangerous. Okay. You know, I mean, does that does that float your boat at all? Because that, I used to love Elite in the old days, and playing Elite in VR is, is amazing, and it's perfectly suited to it, because it's a sit-down cockpit game, but there's a full game there. It's... I think the cockpit w- stuff works for a while, but I, th- I think something like that is... it's a, Yeah, okay, it's a full game, but I just... It seems very niche in terms of... Is, it, is there more than cockpits... Because there's in theory there's battle zone at the moment with you know the the combat arena and that's taking a different oh, yeah. view on it. Yeah, but um, in elite you do the you got you sort of do the trading and you do the bounty hunting and sort of exploring space. It's sort of a more of an open world thing. I mean, I, I love it because I used to love it. I mean, I've spent an entire summer holidays when I was young playing it, yeah. um, flying from planet to planet and just doing the trading. Um, so I love it from back then. So I don't know how it would appeal to somebody new to it. But I'm just, just throwing it out there because it is sort of a fully fleshed game that came out before VR, but it's at, but it's compatible with VR and works. So just, would that say, would that help? Yeah. Maybe not. Doesn't sound like a leech your cup of tea. No, no so Man's that, Sky. Fine. No Man's Sky VR. That's what we need. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Witness would have worked quite well in yeah, VR, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I was always yeah, expecting yeah. a patch for like the games like The Witness, for Firewatch, uh, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, those kind of very slow moving games. I was expecting Gone Home. You know, I would love to play. Yeah. I'd play all of those games again if they had a, a VR patch or a VR edition because they would just be amazing. Playing Firewatch in VR would be a thing of beauty. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to lean towards agreeing with you there, James, because there was a lot of hype about 2016, the year of VR, and it has given us a lot of VR. Let's face it, we talk about it every week. Um, but I worry that unless it kind of finds its niche, if unless it kind of finds its killer app next year, then absolutely it will still be a novelty, it will still be a gimmick. It's brilliant to have one, but I must admit, you know, it hasn't found its feet yet. Uh, and I, I think PSVR is going to help remedy that, It's gone, to, you know, because it's got a bigger install base. But it hasn't found that killer app. It hasn't found that thing that it's it, it's arm in arm in with, has it yet? Yeah. And that's that's what it needs. And it's surprising that that hasn't sort of come out to the fore yet. Worryingly so, maybe. So yeah, I worry mm. that if VR doesn't find its feet within the next year, or a little, you know, a little bit past, and I don't want it to happen, but it could go the same way as you know other fads like three D TV and things. It just passes everyone by, and then we wait another three, few decades for another resurgence. Don't say those words. Don't say those words. My 2017 prediction is kind of along the same lines of kind of what you guys have been talking about. That I predict that um, Sony's E3 conference will also be shown in VR. Um, I think I may have hoped for this for the PlayStation experience, but I think that it will be such a big one for VR, for PlayStation VR, um, that they will actually be streaming it also in VR. So that's kind of, I hope so. That's I, my. Yeah, do, do you know my? So I really don't want to be a downer on this. I just, <laughs> I just think the trailers will look awful in VR because if you're trying to take in the stage and then you're watching the video at the back of the stage, it will be worse than the cinema type screen. So there's part of me that hopes they really don't do this. 
Yeah, because it, it wouldn't be good for clarity. You wouldn't yeah. be able to see. I, yeah, when you when you put it like that, I'd rather just watch it in a four K, a good four K stream. Get the HDRs up. Yes. Mm. Get, yeah, see. Which direction will they go? Because <laughs> be, you're sort of watching it for the for the VR experience, but then you'd have to take off your headset to watch every trailer and pop it back on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, do you think that would be annoying, like during a kind of gameplay experience, that that kind of popping a VR headset on and off? Do you think that would be a bit kind of pop it on, turn it on? Do you think that would be an annoying experience playing, or would you be able to kind of have something that was kind of both kind of non VR and VR as a game? I mean, uh, for an example would be like Call of Duty. There's bits in Call of Duty in um, Infinite Warfare where you jump into a ship and you fly to the next mission. If those were in VR, but then you kind of took it off to then do the first person shooting would that annoy you guys as a, as a mechanic i think it would as depend long on how bit, long it was yeah. on for that's exactly what i was going to say yeah. yeah as long as you were in the rocket for a good while mm. and then as long as the the segments each lasted a good while mm. but i wouldn't want to be swapping every five minutes i'd do my head in but if it was sort of you played a level on foot you know shooty shooty whatever for half an hour then you had a 20 minute space flight battle and then destination and then got out and as the character in the game removes the headset the helmet you remove the headset and then you're on foot I think that could work quite well Mm. just about the pacing of it yeah no, because I was thinking that because, like I said, I played a bit of Call of Duty and Flip Warfare. There's a, there's a lot of space missions in there, and I just thought, that, you know, having played the Call of Duty uh, VR experience, I just thought, you know, that would have just worked really well that you just kind of switched in and out. But I just wondered if it would if it would annoy the gamer. I, I think it would. I, I think it would be novel for a bit, but after a while, it would just get tiresome. Because hmm. I, I think there's problems as well with how the PS4 outputs when the set is turned on. Because it's tr- is it is trying to show. I don't actually know that there's some games in Playroom that do it fine. Yeah, I, I think it would just be the annoyance of having to put it back on and off. And yes. although the the PlayStation VR headset is probably the nicest to do so. Mm. Yeah, it's probably with, the easiest one. Yeah, I I can still see it grating. Mm. If it was implemented well, if there was I think a I'd yeah, like yeah it. game and function. Yes. Yeah, if it was a game of sort of two halves, or you, you know, just just not too often, I think it or, or it's up to you to choose. Like if it was an open world game where you had a rocket and you could go in it and go to space for a while. Yeah, like No Man's Sky, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's up to you. And then when you're bored of flying around, you land and then you take the headset off and walk around. I think that could be. I think it could work, but. We're probably a way off, aren't we? Yes, indeed. They, they, we haven't even got a normal game at the moment, so yes, indeed. <laughs> but so that's it. So that's our 2017 predictions, and that is it for this mammoth game of the year. Almost episode. to 2018 at this point. <laughs> yeah, the 2017 slash 2018 game of the year. Thank you very much. Huge thank you for listening. Um, don't forget, you can keep up with us at gamesofthelostpart.com. You can also find us on Facebook, on Twitter. We're at Lost Part Pod. Uh, we also post this show on YouTube. And don't forget, you can join the PlayStation 4 community and Xbox One Club by searching for Game is a Lost Spark. Darren, where can the guys find you online? Yeah, you can find me <coughs> excuse me, as Wythermator on PS4, Xbox One and Twitch, Daz a Gamer on YouTube and at Daz Whitam on Twitter. Fantastic. James, where can people catch up with you? You can catch me on Big Sheep uh, on Twitter, Xbox Live and everywhere else, I think. Fantastic. For me, I am Chessman on Xbox Live, I'm PS hyphen Chessman on the PlayStation Network, and Chessman UK on Twitter and Nintendo. Don't forget, if you have any feedback or if you would also like to share your game of the year, you can send it to our email address. That email address is feedback at gamersofthelostspark.com. Also, if you're feeling generous, please leave us a review on iTunes. Um, that's about it. Say goodbye, chaps. Cheers. Bye.